K Park, home of the number 14 National Seed Oregon Ducks, as they get ready to open the NCAA tournament against the tourney champs from the Northeast Conference, the Blue Devils of Central Connecticut. So here. Here's how it looks in the Eugene Regional. The Ducks are the top seed here. Central Connecticut is the four seed. Paul Maneri, who's going to retire, and LSU, they were a bubble team, but they get in as a three seed to face the very talented champs from the West Coast Conference. That to the NCAA Baseball Regionals, presented by Capital One. From beautiful Eugene, Oregon, and PK Park, home of the number 14 national seed Oregon Ducks, as they get ready to open the NCAA tournament against the tourney champs from the Northeast Conference, the Blue Devils of Central Connecticut. So here's how it looks in the Eugene Regional. The Ducks are the top seed here. Central Connecticut is the four seed. Paul Maneri, who's going to retire, and LSU, they were a bubble team, but they get in as a three seed to face the very talented champs from the West Coast Conference. That game later tonight on ESPNU at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. We start with 64 teams, 16 regional sites. It's double elimination. Winners of the regionals go on to the best of three super regionals. Then we're down to eight at the College World Series in Omaha. Hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, the College Baseball Hall of Famer, Ben McDonald, I'm Clay Matvick. It's great to have you with us. And Ben, after a disappointing 2020, it's great to have postseason college baseball back. I think everybody's so excited about this, Clay. I mean, it's been well over 700 days since we've had NCAA tournament baseball. I know I'm looking forward to it. I know the kids are happy to be back on the field. And when you think about it, back in February, nearly 290 teams we're yeah. trying to be one of the 64 that are starting regional play today. And we've got an interesting game to start us off. Oregon was picked seventh in the Pac-12 in the preseason. They're a national seed, but the team they are playing will not be intimidated. The Central Connecticut State Blue Devils have been to three of the last four national tournaments. Yeah, their head coach, Charlie Hickey, has got them playing well right now. They won their conference tournament, the Northeast Conference Tournament, to get that automatic bid into the NCAA Tournament. They've been really good as of late, Clay. You look at Oregon, you mentioned them. They've had a good run, too. Finished second in the Pac-12, only behind Arizona. But when you break these two teams down, there's two things that really jump at me. Pitching and defense. Both of them ERA, top 17 in the country. Both of them defensively, top 16 in the country. Pitching and defense, Clay, is what wins championships. And we're going to be seeing some really good veteran arms to start this tournament. Brandon Fox, sixth-year senior right-hander, goes for Central Connecticut. And Colin Kafka, junior right-hander for the Ducks. Eugene, Oregon, 72 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Great for baseball. Every morning. It's an absolutely perfect day for Central Connecticut State and the 14 national seed Oregon to start the national tournament here in Eugene. And Cullen Kafka will be towing the rubber for the Ducks. Six foot four, 210 pound junior who has 13, 13 career wins. They trust this guy, Ben. Yeah, and why shouldn't they? I mean, he's been out there four years now, over 200 innings pitched in his career. And he's been the Saturday night guy all year long for the Ducks behind ace Robert Alstrom. He brings a lot of experience in three. How about this, Clay? Three earned runs or less in 13 of his 14 starts so far this year. It's 88 to 92 with the fastball. He likes to sink it. When he's having his best success, he's getting a lot of ground balls. He's going to show you a slider and a changeup as well. well he's going to face a Central Connecticut State team that really reflects their head coach, Charlie Hickey. An old school guy, 56 years old. He has 580 wins with the Blue Devils, the winningest coach in program history four times conference coach of the year. It's a plucky ball club. Dave Matthews with seven home runs. He's down a bit in the order, but it's a productive lineup one through nine. And here comes Dan Cavino to lead it off for the Blue Devils. The champs out of the Northeast Conference. They won the league tournament to get here. And it's unusual to see a designated hitter lead off, but 
That's how Charlie Hickey has it. Cavino was the starting second baseman until about a month ago. Got injured in the field. Needs some surgery on his shoulder at the end of the season, but that's going to wait because first things first, it's the national tournament. And we're underway, and the first pitch is down from Kafka. And, you know, it's going to take a lot to keep a kid out of a national tournament game. Cavino says, you know what, it may be a little sore. I can't play the field, but I can swing the bat. And he swings and puts it in play. Gavin Grant, the Oregon second baseman, will gobble it up and throw out Cavino for the first out. It's a really good defense behind Kafka, Ben. You talked about how they can catch it. It's a 981 fielding percentage, ninth best in the country. Yeah, they can do it. And, you know, as a pitcher, you know, you love to have the defense behind you, especially when you talk about a guy like Kafka who creates a lot of ground balls like he did to the first batter of the game. And now that'll bring up Jay DeVito, junior third baseman. Maybe their best and most consistent player all year. First team all league. And he's ahead in the count. Two balls and no strikes. Central Connecticut won eight of their ten league series but finished second to Bryant in the regular season. Bryant has really dominated that conference in recent years. But, Ben, I'll tell you what, this is the team that more often than not over the last decade has been coming out of the conference tournament. Yeah, we asked Coach Hickey about that yesterday. You know, and he was kind of nonchalant, like, well, you know, we just happened to beat him late in the year. But he seems to do that more and more every year. There's a strike. See how they got here. 28 and 13 overall. 21 wins in the league. Got hot at the right time. Another bounding ball to Grant. Two up, two down. Well, Kafka is rolling right now. This is what he does. Fastball 89 to 93, and he likes to stay down. If you see him up in the zone, it's normally a mistake. He's going to be right at the bottom of the knees, just below, and getting those ground balls like he's gotten the first two so far today. Yeah, the Oregon pitching has been shockingly good this year. And one of the reasons they're hosting this weekend is Noah Martinez comes up now for the Blue Devils. A big physical presence in the three hole. Six foot five, 230 pounds out of New Milford, Connecticut. Yeah, hitting up over about, 300. You talk about fill up the batter's box. He can do that. <laughs> A guy you wouldn't want to mess with. He spent some time at West Point playing for Army. And this is his first year at Central Connecticut. Yeah, Central, not a big home run hitting team. Only 31 home runs this year, which isn't a lot. They're still averaging 6.6 .6 runs per game. That sails outside. It's two balls and two strikes. So all fastball so far today by Kafka. He's trying to establish that fastball both in and down and away to the left-handers. He does have that slider, does have a changeup, but we haven't seen either one of them yet. That's a fastball down again. Boy, Ben, like you said, he is living downstairs, and so far it's working out to his advantage. Yeah, and I always say these first innings are the toughest ones for a starting pitcher because what you have in the bullpen doesn't necessarily translate to that game mound. And then you get a whole different adrenaline flow when you step on the game mound and the batter steps in the box. But so far, Kafka's been really good. This is down to fill out the count. Yep, there's your first off-speed pitch. Pretty good at bat by Martinez here. Trying to get aboard for the cleanup man, Buddy Dwayne who comes into the tournament right hot. The 3-2. Hit on a line. Back up the middle base here. First knock of the tournament. And it comes out the bat of Noah Martinez, a two-out base runner for the Blue Devils here in the first. Well, that's a nice short stroke by Martinez for a guy that's big as he is at 6'5". 
You see a lot of those tall guys get really long with their swing sometimes, but he was short and right to it and barreled that one up. And now here comes another sixth year senior for Central. It's Buddy Dwayne. Second team all NEC. Despite battling an oblique strain most of the year. He was absolutely on fire, Ben, during the conference tournament. Went 9 for 19 with a couple of homers and eight runs batted in in five games. Yeah, six foot four, another physical presence in the box for Central. Yeah, there's no doubt they look good coming off the bus. Here's the 1 1. And that's a strike called by home plate umpire Mike Morris. 1 and 2. And you mentioned it, both of these clubs play a lot of veteran guys, both in yep. the pitching staff and position player wise. And that's what we're going to see throughout college baseball this year. That's pretty much what we've seen because of what happened with COVID last year. There's a breaking ball, misses outside. Now 2 and 2 with Martinez at first. Remember. Everybody that wanted a year of eligibility got a year of eligibility back this year. It was unlimited roster, so you could carry as many players as you wanted to if you chose to. 2-2 two -two pitch. And this one is lifted and dumped into right center field. Back-to-back -back hits for Martinez and Dwayne. And they will bring up Sam Loda now with two outs. Boy, I like this swing here by Dwayne. He's fooled. Watch the body get out in front. But you know what? He keeps the hands back just enough and finds the barrel right over the second baseman. Grant's head for a base hit. He knew it as soon as he barreled it up. A little something rolling here with two outs for Central Connecticut. And now here comes the veteran catcher, Sam Loader, in his second NCAA tournament. He was the starting catcher when they played in the Fayetteville Regional a couple of years ago. Chops the first pitch. Sam Nowitzki at third makes it look easy. And Oregon is out of the inning. Central Connecticut strands two in the first. Ducks coming up for the first time. capable and equipped for family life. The three row pilot from Honda. This is the Epson EcoTank color printer. No more buying cartridges. Big ink tanks, lots of ink. Print about this many pages. The Epson EcoTank, just fill and chill. Good look at the grandstand here at PK Park. It holds around 4,000. They're limiting it because of COVID. Opened in 2009 when the Ducks brought their program back after a three-decade hiatus. They're going to face Brandon Fox, the starter for Central Connecticut State. Andrew Braun, the senior left-hander, has been the staff ace Ben this year, but they're going to go with their number two arm here in game one of the tournament. Yeah, big guy, too. 6'5", 235, a sixth-year senior, Clay. He brings a ton of experience, 282 career innings pitch. Matter of fact, if he picks six, six innings today, he will become the program leader in innings pitched. And so now the Oregon Ducks coming up to the plate for the first time, hosting the national tournament for the first time in eight years. And Head coach Mark Wasikowski draws it up this way. Yovan with 14 homers in that number two spot. He is a talent. And the guy behind him, Aaron Zavala, is someone to keep an eye on offensively throughout this national tournament. It's a versatile offense, Ben. They can beat you in a lot of ways. Yeah, they're good at just about anything. 289 team batting average, almost seven runs per game. They can hit a few home runs, steal some bags along the way. And you're right, it is a deep lineup that can beat you a bunch of different ways. Here's Tanner Smith, sophomore left fielder, third team All-American. He's been a scrappy leadoff man all year. He'll spray it around to all fields. And he's going to pop it up. 
Left side. Shortstop going back for Tachi. He can't make the catch. And that's going to get down. And standing on second is Tanner Smith. And mistake in the outfield grass, or turf as it is. And there's a base runner right away for the Ducks. Yeah, this ball might have gotten up in the sun because you can see Bertacci got go over from the shortstop position. He's got the best angle. Looks like he's going to make the catch right there, but doesn't come up with it. it. Looks like at the last second, the wind kind of blowing out. You see him make the call right there, but just off the tip of his glove and not the start that Central wanted for sure. It's going to be an error on the shortstop, Bertacci. And it's a central defense that has been very good this year. In fact, first in the league with a 980 fielding percentage. Here's Yovan, Kenyon Yovan, redshirt junior out of Beaverton, Oregon. First team all Pac-12. Has more than a quarter of the team's homers. That's 14, tied for an Oregon single season record. And he checked his swing on the 1-0, went around, ball and a strike. Well, that's what you're going to see from Brandon Fox. He's not going to light up the radar gun, Clay. It's a mid-80s type fastball, a good curveball, and a good changeup as well. But he's a control guy. He's going to have to pitch backwards, meaning he's got to land his off-speed stuff even in fastball counts if he's going to be effective against a really solid Oregon offense. That's in the turf. Sam Lode is able to keep it in front, and Smith will stay at second base. Two balls and a strike now to Yovan. Oregon finished a game behind Arizona for first in the Pac-12. Arizona took two of three from the Ducks in Tucson back in March. Of course, Arizona is a top eight seed for the first time in this tournament. 2-1 pitch, and that's pulled foul, 2-2. Two and two. It was a really good year, Ben, in the Pac-12. I mean, the league got six teams in the tournament and three national seeds, Arizona, Oregon, and Stanford. Well, Coach Waz told us yesterday when we talked to him, he said this he, he thinks this year is as strong as he's ever seen the Pac-12 competition-wise from top to bottom. Of course, yeah. Oregon had an outstanding year. You win 20 games in the Pac-12, and they did. That says something. Here comes the 2-2 two, two breaking ball that doesn't snap, and now full count to Yvonne. And this is a dangerous guy. And you've got an even more dangerous hitter, perhaps, in Zavala behind him. Yeah, there's no break in these top five for the Ducks. I mean, all of them well over 300 batting average. That's up. And that's hit high. And it's hit deep. Goodbye. Home run. And that is a new single season home run record for Kenyon Yovan, his 15th of the year. Well, that's one way to get the party started, huh? Yovan got a ball elevated. Watch where this ball is. Again, Fox not a power guy. He needs to be down. You see the target down, but look where this ball is. And Yovan gets every stitch of this one, and he knew it right away. He stands at home plate and looks at it for a second. Nice bounce. A top or bottom to top swing, and that ball easily gets out to left center field. That's back-to-back -back games for him with a home run and 15 of them on the year now. Oh, my. Here's Zavala now. When we were talking with Mark Wasikowski this week, and he said of Yovan, he goes, he's kind of like our Sasquatch up here in the Pacific Northwest. He's big, he's physical, he's going to make a statement in this tournament. It happens to come in his first at bat. And now this is whacked at by Zavala. It's going to stay on the infield. DeVito having issues, but he makes the catch for the first down. Well, this D. This defense has been so good this year for Central Connecticut, having his problems right now. And again, it is a high sky. The sun is right there. You see the third baseman, DeVito. He comes in. Looks like he's camped under it pretty easy right here, Clay. But at the last second, he has to move towards second base. And I mean, barely comes up with that one. Now, the winds are light, but they're gusting into double digits out to straightaway center. So perhaps the wind pushed that one a little bit. Maybe it played on Bertacci's ball, on the ball that Smith hits. You see the center field flag here at PK Park.
One out, and Gabe Matthews at the play. Another super senior chose to come back to Oregon because he wanted to experience an NCAA tournament. And again, it's the first for Oregon since 2015. This guy's been in the program a long time. He takes down two and one. So Brandon Fox battling right away here in the first inning, already down 2 0. An error and a two run homer by Yovan. 2 1 cued foul. It's two balls and two strikes to Matthews. I mean, it's. It's interesting when you think back on Oregon's season that they were picked to finish seventh in the Pac-12, yes. and here they yes. are at home on day one of the national tournament. Swung on and missed, and Fox gets a big strikeout, or was that foul? Yeah, that was foul. So the count were right along at two and two. Well, that's Fox's changeup. He's got a good one. He'll use it a lot to the left-handers, more of the breaking ball to the right-handers as far as off-speed pitches go. But he threw a good changeup there, and Matthews just barely got a piece of it. Breaking ball is what actually gets Matthews out. And that is his first strikeout. Now two down for Kasovich. So here's the Blue Devils' defense. Ritachi already with an error, but it really is a good group of defenders or the best defending team in the league in the NEC, 16th best in the nation. Noah Martinez at first, a ton of chances, but only two errors on the year. So two down for Kasovich. Josh Kasovich, the freshman shortstop. Came to Oregon as a pitcher out of Palo Alto High School, but has started every game at shortstop this year and has done a terrific job. It's inside, two and one. Oregon has never faced Central Connecticut. They have not faced LSU, one of the other teams in this region. They faced Gonzaga quite a few times, including this year. And a comebacker. Kasovich will flip to first to end the inning. But some noise. Oregon gets a two-run shot from Kenyon Yovan. He's homered in back-to-back -back games, and he's got a Ducks record 15 on the year now. Color cartridges in your printer ready for another school year? What's cyan mean? It means cyan Mara honor roll. The Epson Eco Tank. No more cartridges. It comes with an incredible amount of ink. Just fill and chill. Our life as a family revolves around football. Being a football kid, I believe, is just being a leader. And as parents, we have to look at our children and say, OK, we can see what's in you. And it's our job to help bring that out of you. It's a beautiful feeling. Here we go to the top of the second. Oregon with a 2-0 lead on a two-run homer by Kenyon Yavon. Talked about the Pac-12 and the strength of that league this year, Ben. You can see that uh, it was stacked again this year. Arizona won the regular season. Arizona, Stanford, and Oregon all getting national seeds. UCLA, Arizona State, and Oregon State also making the tournament this year. Dave Matthews leading it off from Central Connecticut. You know, and, and the Pac-12, Ben, does not play a conference tournament, but because of the strength of that league, you tested weekend after weekend, and that's why the Pac-12 usually fares pretty well in these national tournaments. Oh, no doubt. I mean, you talk about Stanford, you know the success Oregon State has had in recent years. A couple of national titles. 
You know, this year was a different kind of year because a lot of these conferences didn't play a whole lot of midweek games as well. Oh, and Cullen Casca. Strike that. Yeah, good fastball. That's that sinking fastball. He'll start it in the middle of the plate and kind of run it down and away from the left-handers, and he executed that one perfectly. So Dave Matthews is a quick out. First strikeout for Kafka, who gave up a couple of hits in the first inning. And I chopped that by Tornero. Mike Tornero out on one pitch as he grounds to short. Two up, two down here in the second. So already four ground ball outs for Cullen Kafka. And the two balls that Martinez and Dwayne hit in the first, they were struck solidly, but they weren't exactly roped. I mean, it, he's done a good job, like you said, keeping the ball down. Well, that's his game. You know, sinking that fastball, that's what he likes to do. And if you'll notice, both base hits were balls left up a little bit. One was a breaking ball, one was a fastball. Boy, if he can do that right there, if he can stay right down towards the bottom of the knees on the outside part of the plate, he's going to be tough to deal with. Second baseman Hunter Pasqualini, another freshman. And a left-handed bat in the lineup. Hits it well, and that is through on the right side. Third hit for the Blue Devils. Again, a hit with two outs. All of their hits have come with two outs. That'll bring up the nine-hole hitter, Matt Bertacci. Steady veteran shortstop. Made that error in the first inning, which maybe cost him a run. We'll see uh, if that ultimately comes back to haunt them. But Central is known to score some runs. Like you said, they've got a really good offense. I doubt they're going to go quietly here. Yeah, when you look at all four of these teams in this region right here, I mean, they're very similar when it comes to numbers and stats and you know, runs per game. They're right there, about a half run difference. All of them right around six and a half runs per game. Bertacci was five for 17 in last week's league tournament. He's got hits in nine of the last 11. Blue Devils went four and one in the NEC Conference Tournament, and they came through the loser's bracket to beat Bryant on back-to-back -back days. That's exactly what they did back in 2019 to win the automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. And this group went to Fayetteville, won a game in 2019, beat number 24 Cal. In the loser's bracket game, a lot of the players from that year are back. To a yeah, look, that's what it takes. You know, that's what it takes is experience at the collegiate level to win right now. And the fact that they went to Fayetteville, we know what the crowds are like in Fayetteville. You know, big time crowds, big time environment. And their coach said, you know, he said, you know what, we're, we're not going to be intimidated. Coach Charlie Hickey been here three of the last four NCAA tournaments. He has his, has his club here. A closer play at first base, but diving back is Pasqualini. Well, it looked like Pasqualini was leaning a little bit, thinking about going towards second base. He only has three stolen bases on the year. Man on, two out. And again, they'll throw over to first. Central Connecticut State is located in New Britain, Connecticut. And this is the seventh NCAA tournament appearance for the Blue Devils. And again, all under Charlie Hickey. 2-2 is sprayed to the right side, just foul. Long set from Kafkin again. He'll throw over to first. 
the biggest reason been for Oregon's success this year has been the health and consistency of the pitching staff. They've used the same three starters since early March. And Kafka gets a strikeout to end the second. So the Blue Devils strand another one. 2 nothing Oregon. capable and equipped for family life. The three row pilot from Honda. Magenta. 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 <laughs> Magenta. The Epson Eco Tank. No more cartridges, just lots of ink. Print whatever makes you happy. The Epson Eco Tank. Just fill and chill. Here's a look at the Oregon dugout under head coach Mark Wasikowski. In his first full season as head coach at Oregon. How about that? Gets him to the national tournament as a host. There's Mark right there, 50 years old. Won the College World Series as a player at Pepperdine back in 1992. Spent 20 years as an assistant for his former coach, Andy Lopez, at both Florida and Arizona. And then he was under George Horton here at Oregon for five years. Went to Purdue as a head coach and now back in Eugene and doing just great things, Ben. Yeah, not the year that you want to take over the program, right? Last year in a, in a shortened season. But, you know, he told us, he said, listen, we took advantage of it. He said, we took advantage of us getting more physical in the weight room. We spent a lot of time in the weight room building our bodies and getting stronger. And if you look at the home run production for them, I mean, it's hard to say last year. I mean, in just 15 games, they only hit nine home runs. But, see, they've got... 48 home runs this year, so you can tell they're a more physical bunch than what they were last year. Boy, that is crunched by Anthony Hall. Deep to right, goodbye home run. Once it got to about 20 feet off the ground, it stayed at 20 feet until it left the yard. Just a laser shot by Anthony Hall is fifth of the year and the second for the Ducks here in this game. It's 3-0. Well, the Ducks have the long ball working right now, Clay. You talk about more physical. Here's your physicality right here. A ball left middle, middle, just about thigh high. And Anthony Hall knows exactly what to do with that one. So that's two long ones so far. Well, that's a that's a sound I still hear in my sleep. It's a nightmare. But when you hear that sound, you know. Now this one hit by Novitsky to center, and Buddy Dwayne, who covers a lot of ground out there in the middle of the outfield, tracks it down for the first down. You were just talking about the physical nature now of the Ducks, and this is maybe a little different to the style of the past years for Oregon and already two home runs in this game. Yeah, because years ago when you talked about West Coast baseball, you know, especially in the Pac-12, you talked about a lot of bunning and running and sacrifice bunning, taking an extra 90 feet, but now they're realizing they can blow the ball out of the ballpark. And again, the Oregon Ducks aren't a big time home run hitting team, but when you talk about the bigger ballparks and the ball doesn't carry as well out there as it does maybe in the Southeast, still when you come in and you hit now 50 home runs on the year. That's a pretty good number. Wazikowski spent a lot of time in the SEC at Florida as an assistant. And spent some time in the Big Ten, of course, at Purdue. And he said, you know, I, I think we need to get bigger. And you talked about how they have made that a big-time part of what they're doing now. And this is just a physical group. Well, Coach Waz certainly put his time in, you know. Look, 21 years as an assistant coach before he got his first head job. 
and he did it all over the country too so he took a little bit from I think every program that he was at and he realized you know when they changed the balls a few years ago in college baseball the home run became relevant again right and you could hit the ball out of the ballpark and I think a lot of these teams and the ones that can do a little bit of everything Clay that's what you talk about and it's so true they can bunt still they can take an extra 90 feet they can steal some bases from time to time but they can also bang it too and this one is hit hard by Scanlon Jack Scanlon making a bid for extra bases Matthews fighting with it a bit in the corner gets it in it'll be a stand-up double for the Oregon catcher with one out here in the second well, Oregon not missing anything pretty much every ball we've seen so far today that has been left up out over the plate they have found the barrel with it Yovan's home run Hall's home run and now Scanlon gets a ball that was elevated out over the plate and again Brandon Fox's game is not power. It's a mid 80s type fastball. He has to be down to be effective. He's got to be changing speeds. And right now, up in the zone is not a ticket for him. Gavin Grant in the nine hole. He flashes bunt, gets it down nicely. Everybody's safe. Scanlon to third. Gavin Grant with a perfectly placed bunt to the left of the mound. And it's two on with one out. Well, a perfect example of what we've been talking about, the ability to do a little bit of everything. And that's just simply a read by Gavin Grant. He saw the third baseman, DeVito, playing back. So he said, you know what? If you're going to play me there, you take what the game gives you. He lays down a perfect bunt right down the third baseline and easily beats that one out. Third hit in the inning for the Ducks. And they've got four on the game. And Pat Hall... The Central Connecticut pitching coach is going to meander out to talk to Brandon Fox. We mentioned Fox has been the Saturday night guy. The ace of this pitching staff is Braun. But Braun came back on short rest in the conference tournament. So they felt like that Brandon Fox gave him the best chance of being successful today. Looks like it might be a little action down in that Blue Devil bullpen. Tim Buchek, one of their top relievers is starting to warm up here in the second inning as Tanner Smith digs in he shows bunt runner goes here comes the throw it's in time got it Sam Loder showing off his arm guns down Gavin Grant Scanlon stays tight at third two down well, you wonder everybody plays it a little bit differently first and third. Here's your jump over at first base. Really a pretty good jump, but Sam Loda comes up and throws a rocket right down to second base. I mean, this is not even close. What a throw that was. A nice tag. Runner at third, not able to advance. Smith, who reached in the first inning on an error, gets away, and Scanlon scores. Boy, Loda, who just threw out a base runner, saw that one sneak away just far enough to allow Scanlon to score. Boy, it just looked like the Blue Devils about to get out of this inning with minimal damage. And you get a ball down, he blocks it, but he comes up. And when he comes up, the ball goes right between his legs. There's Scanlon hustling home head first. Oregon Ducks now up four to nothing. That's going to be scored at wild pitch. So two runs in the first, two here in the second for Oregon. Strike two. So Smith, who got on, on an error in the first and came around to score on Yvonne's homer. Has been... Just a great table setter for Yvonne Zavala and Matthews behind him this year. He's already proven that in this game. Candy hop for Pasqualini at second. 
And that does it. Three outs in the second, but two runs in, Ben. Well, Anthony Hall got the Ducks going in the second inning. Watch the location of this. He finds a barrel. So two home runs by the Ducks. Uh -oh. Sport. Just a great day in Eugene, Oregon, as we start the NCAA baseball tournament. Presented by Capital One, the number 14 national seed, Oregon Ducks. Back in the tournament and hosting for the first time since 2013. Arkansas is the number one national seed. You know, it's interesting to note, Ben, that sometimes can be a curse. The number one overall seed has not won the College World Series since Miami in 1999. It's a lot for the Hogs to bear, but if there's a team that we've seen this year, the Hogs might be up to it. No doubt. I mean, look, they've won everything they've tried to win so far. They won all 10 of their series in the SEC. Of course, won the overall championship and won the conference tournament. So they are deserving and have been the consensus number one team in the country for a while now in college baseball. The leadoff man, Dan Cavino, is 0 for 1. Grinded out to second his first time up. Central Connecticut has three hits in this ballgame, but they're down 4 0. Another ground ball for Kafka. Second baseman Grant can't get it out of his glove. And Cavino is aboard to start the third. Well, Cavino can run a little bit. Sit right at the top of that lineup. Although he's a DH, he can really run. And you see Grant come in. Everything looks good right here, but a little trouble going from glove to throwing hand. Not able to get it out of his glove in time. Going to rule that an infield hit for Cavino. And this is the part of the order that can do the most damage for Central Connecticut. This is Jay DeVito. Also 0 for 1 with a ground out. Strike. DeVito with a 505 on base percentage. Second in the NEC, 20th national. But he's behind in the count here, nothing in turn. And now Jack Scanlon, who hit that home run last inning, a little shaken up. Boy, have you seen a taller catcher this year than Scanlon? He's close to 6'5". Yeah. But, you know, just watch him. He moves pretty good back there for a he big He does. Well, okay. right off the kneecap, and that's kind of that new catching style where Catchers are starting to get down low, play one leg, you know, get their rear end on the ground. They feel like they can yeah. frame and steal a few more pitches, but it leaves you a little bit more exposed. The 0-2 to DeVito. That is wrapped foul outside of the third baseline. Here's Sam Nowitzki. Only three errors this year at the hot corner for the Ducks' third baseman. Winner plays either LSU or Gonzaga, whoever wins that ball game later tonight. The loser will play whoever loses that game tomorrow and face elimination. That might be a warning to Kafka, Ben, and I'm not sure about what. I, I'm not either. I mean, I, I felt like he stepped off before he made the move. The 0-2, breaking ball wrapped into center, and that's going to get down in front of Hall for another hit. Back-to-back -back bingos here for Central Connecticut. And nobody out for Martinez. Yeah, an infield base hit by Covino. And a breaking ball left up in the zone by Kafka. And DeVito right on time. Blue Devils a little something brewing here in the top of the third inning with first and second, nobody out. This is the guy that Central wants up with men on, Noah Martinez. As Scanlon comes out for a quick chat. And there's going to be a meeting on the mound. Jake Angier, the Ducks pitching coach. 
making his first appearance of the tournament. All in all, your thoughts and what you've seen from Colin Kafka in this start. Well, he's been exactly what we thought he would be. We, we were told he was a sinker ball guy that liked to stay down, and when he's on his game, he creates a lot of ground balls. And that's kind of what he's done if you look at it. Now, he's elevated a couple pitches. And Central Connecticut's been on time for those. You see Coach Waz out. He's out arguing with the umpire and saying that, that shouldn't have been a warning. He stepped off before he made the move over towards first base. Cavino at second, DeVito at first, and Martinez at the plate with nobody out for Central Connecticut. Their biggest threat since Sam Loder was up in the first inning with two on and two out. And Martinez with six home runs, second best on the team, only behind Matthews, who has seven. So the right guy at the plate in one swing can get right back in his ballgame. Long stretch and the 1 0 to Martinez. Outs, but just caught the outside corner. 1 1. Yeah, that ball looked like it might have been a couple of balls off the outside corner, but Kafka gets the call. Martinez has been outstanding at the plate over the last month. Two balls and a strike to the big first baseman. He hit. 356 in the month of May, and after his hit in the first inning, he has now reached in 19 straight ballgames. Well, he had a good NEC tournament for sure. Seven for 19, drove in five. 2 1 pitch. Swung out and missed. 2 and 2. This might have been the changeup by here by Kafka. So a couple of fastballs. Watch him take a little bit off. You can see the swing out in front is Martinez. So a really good circle change working down and away from Martinez. So heavy on the fastball has been Kafka. But there's one of the first changeups we've seen. Two on, nobody out. The 2 2 pitch. Checked his swing. That time it's outside. Full count. The way that Martinez swung at that changeup, I would not be shocked at all. Even on a 3-2 count, he comes right back with the changeup again because he went changeup, missed with the fastball. We'll see what he comes back with on a 3-2 count. Breaking ball into right field off of Grant. Rounding third coming home is Cavina into third base is DeVito and Martinez delivers and Central Connecticut is on the board it's four to one well this is just how you answer back being down four to nothing back to back base hits and Martinez comes to plate three two count he gets an all-speed pitch and hits a rocket out to the second baseman Grant can't come up with him. he shoots out towards right center field you knew one run would score and it does so runners on first and third one run in That's going to be ruled an RBI single for Martinez. And that's his second hit. And here comes Buddy Dwayne, who's been hotter than a $2 pistol. He had a hit in the first inning. Well, this is what he you went. see a lot, Clay, from these veteran teams. You know, the second time through the lineup, you see the pitcher for the first time, then you begin to make some adjustments. And it looks like, yeah. to me, Central Connecticut's been able to make some adjustments off Kafka. Wayne went two for four in the title clinching win against Bryant on Sunday to get Central Connecticut to the national tournament. Has an opportunity here to do some more damage. One run already in. The breaking pitch stays down. It's two and one. Now Scanlon's going to go back to the mound. Noah Martinez, take a look at this, right off the second baseman, Grant shoots out to right field. 
And you can see going from first to third, DeVito, the plays in front of him, he never checks up. Two on pitch to the veteran Dwayne. Swung out and missed. Now the count's even. Full count. And I'll say this about the approach for Central Connecticut. When they're getting the pitch to hit, they're ripping it. Yes. But they are making Kafka work. I mean, he's up to 54 pitches here in the third inning. Well, when you get a sinker ball guy, you want to see the ball up in his own, right? So if you, you know, a sinker ball guy, if you see a sinker ball guy and the ball starts at your knees, that's the ones you want to lay off of because you know with the sink that it has, it's not going to be a strike by the time it gets to home plate. It almost just feels like Central Connecticut is starting to realize that and say, you know what, we want, we need to see it up. We need to see it above our knees before we offer it. And they're laying off a lot of those balls down that they were swinging at the first time through. And there's pitches by inning for Kafka. 20 in the first, 14, and now 15 so far in the third. And bases loaded now. First walk allowed by Kafka. And now he faces Loader, who grounded out to Nowitzki at third back in the first inning. One of the reasons, Ben, for Oregon's great success on the mound this year is they haven't walked a lot of guys. Fewest in the Pac-12, 173 coming into today. That walk loaded the bases, the 1-0 now. And a strike on the outside corner, one and one. Well, you when you can pitch and play defense, and that's what Oregon's been able to do, their pitchers have been able to challenge within the strike zone and let their defense go to work. And you could say the same thing about Central Connecticut, Gonzaga. All the teams that's in this regional can really pitch it. Breaking ball. Hit sharply, could be two. Kasevich to Grant to Matthews. They get the double play. DeVito is able to score. And that makes it four to two. Well, I think if you're the Oregon Ducks, you'll gladly trade two for one. Two outs for just one run. This ball's hit just a routine hopper over to Kasevich, right over to Grant. He turns it over and a good finish on the back end by Matthews. Brings up Dave Matthews, the right fielder for Central. Struck out his first time up. One of four seniors on this roster has helped win 117 games and three league titles for this club. Well, sometimes pitching is about minimizing damage. You know, you get a bases loaded situation, nobody out. And Kafka kind of got back to doing what he's done so far today, and that's roll a ground ball. And that was perfectly tailor-made double play. Great foul, one and two to Dave Matthews. The leading home run hitter for the Blue Devils. Also leads the team in stolen bases. A great athlete out of Newtown, Connecticut. One two pitch. Back on the outfield turf is Grant. He'll make this play. So Central Connecticut gets a couple runs back. It's now 4 2 Oregon. an eco tank no more buying cartridges look at all this ink it comes with big ink tanks lots of ink no more cartridges incredible amount of ink the epson eco tank just fill and chill always capable and 
equipped for family life. The three-row pilot from Honda. Here's a look at our bracket. The winner of this regional will face whoever comes out of the Knoxville Regional in the Supers next week. Coming up later tonight, Gonzaga and LSU, 10 Eastern time, 7 Pacific. Looking forward to that on the U. You and me, Gonzaga and LSU, Ben, what do you think? That's going to be a good one. Landon Marceau going for LSU. He's been their ace, and Alec Jacob has been the ace all year long. So we got two aces on the bump in game two of this regional. And, of course, Paul Maneri announcing his retirement last week. So it's going to be an emotional bunch of Bayou Bengals as they start playing the national tournament, which will be the last go-around for Paul Maneri. He's hoping that it doesn't come to an end until Omar. Here's Yovan who went deep in the first inning, going deep again. This time straight away center, off the batter's eye. A solo shot for Yovan. Two big flies, and that makes it 5-2. to two. Well, how about you, Kenyon Yovan, huh? He likes the ball up, and he is showing it today. And right now, he's making it look really easy. He gets the ball elevated again from Brandon Fox. Watch where this ball is, trying to get it down. But instead, you're talking about belt tie right down the middle. And another one, a no-doubter, a bottom to top swing. Gets the ball in the air. This one's off the batter's eye. You can see the center fielder, Duane, going all the way back, but just runs out of room right at the 400 mark. So 16 long ones now on the year for Kenyon Yovan. So he just added to his school single-season home run record. And Zavala comes up. The quiet, humble leader of this bunch. The Pac-12 Player of the Year. Second-team All-American. Just outstanding numbers. Speaking of school record, school record this year in runs scored. Walks second in the nation, on base percentage, 18th in the country in batting average. He's done a little bit of everything for the Ducks this year. Product of South Salem High School. Grew up wanting to play at Oregon. And he has realized that dream. Named All-American yesterday, yesterday by Collegiate Baseball, second team All-American. Tanner Smith over in left field and Gabe Matthews over at first base for the Ducks. Both were named third team All-American, so three All-Americans. The one-two to Zavala. That is a good piece of hitting. He goes opposite field, dumps it into left in front of Tornero. So he's aboard for Matthews with nobody out. Yeah, that, that's not even fair right there to be able to go down and get a ball that's not even a strike. And you can see why Zavala's been right around that 400 mark all year long for the Ducks because the ability to go down and get a ball like that, it's a borderline strike and not pull it, but hit it the other way for a base hit. Swing and a miss by Matthews, who struck out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. And again, Buczek is working in that central bullpen. Yeah. That gets off the glove of Loder. And going over to second is Zavala. That popped right out of the glove of the Blue Devils catcher. Yeah, Loda had really good play throughout a, a base runner, but also a ball's gotten between his legs. That one just simply hit in the glove and kicked away. 1-1. One, one. So it's a turf field, Ben, here at PK Park. It's got a dirt mound, but uh, kind of the scouting report on the ballpark 
is it's a fair park during the day. If you stroke it pretty good, it's going to get out. I think we can uh, affirm that with what we've seen so far today. But at night, because of the moisture that rides in here off the Pacific Ocean, it, it, it's really hard to get it out. Mm -hmm. well, all you got to do is look at the ERA. Oregon's ERA versus the road, two points higher on the road than what it is at home. And that says something about the ballpark. And night games, as you mentioned, ball's just not going to jump. Right now, it's a day game, obviously, so it's jumping better. But you also have a pretty good wind. You can see the flag yeah. right there. The wind blowing out pretty good straight away center field. The one-two from Fox. This is down two and two. Matthews just a pile of Ducks records. It's been around the program a long time. Records for bats, hits, doubles, RBIs. All compiled since he was a freshman All-American back in 2017. Big part of what the Oregon Ducks have been for several years now. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Just below the knees and now full count. Boy, and Fox wanted that when the pitcher for Central Connecticut didn't get the call right at the bottom. Up to 48 pitches now, 29 of which have been strikes. Two in the first, two in the second, one more here in the third for Oregon, leading five to two in this opening round game. Payoff pitch. This one is lifted. Left center field. Tornero coming over in the gap, makes the catch. Runner tags but holds. And there's one down. I'll bring up Josh Kasovich. So Kasovich riding a 14-game hitting streak into the national tournament. Grounded back to Fox in the first inning. He's 0 for 1. Chop. Left side. That's a fair ball. DeVito, throw, not in time. Zavala safe at third. Kasovich beats it out at first. Runners at the corners, one out. And that I was a DeVito, tough play for DeVito. Yeah, I think DeVito thought this ball was foul. Just a ball just pounded right on top of the plate. But it's clearly, it looks like it's fair to me from the angle we have. But to see the bobble right there, when he bobbled and hit the turf, Made him speed up, and boy, speed can make you speed up your game. And when he bobbles it right here, you knew it was going to be tough. It had to be a perfect throw. And I don't even know if it had been a perfect throw if he'd have got it. Yeah, I don't either. Kasovich can really get down the line. So another hit for the Ducks. And that one is snared by Pasqualini. He'll go to second for the force. Another run comes home as Zavala scores to make it 6-2. to two. Well, what a play by Pasqualini to come up with this ball. Here's your defense. This is a team that we thought we were going to see. Central Connecticut's defense has been outstanding. Ranging to his left, Pasqualini lays out. And boy, from one knee, throws a dart to the shortstop. They get a force, but another run pushed across by the Oregon Ducks. Now up 6-2. to two. 30th run batted in for Hall, who had a homer back in the second inning. And now Nowitzki will hit again. Fly out to center is only time up. Well, we said these Ducks can score in a multitude of ways, and we're seeing that. Long run, and Tornero gets there to end the inning. But how about the power by Kenyon Yovan? A two-run shot in the first. Gets one up in the zone here in the third. Goodbye. He's got 16 bombs on the year, and his Ducks are riding in front 6-2 after three. We're going to a dimension where I always win. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Epson Eco Tank. No more buying cartridges. Look at all this ink it comes with. Big ink tanks, lots of ink. No more cartridges. Incredible amount of ink. The Epson Eco Tank. Just fill and chill. Back in Eugene, Oregon, as we move to the fourth. Each team plating two in the third. It's 6 2. Ducks, the number 14 national seed. First day of the national tournament. All 16 sites underway. Ground ball to short. Kasevich yeah. is going to throw out Tornero. I think he has swung on the first pitch for both of his at bats and both times grounding out to short. One down. While well, the NCAA regionals coverage from all 16 sites continuing tomorrow on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. For more information on all 90 NCAA championships, go to NCAA.com. I'm Clay Matvick. He is the College Baseball Hall of Famer, Ben McDonald. And it's great to be back in the saddle with you, my friend, as we are so happy to have the NCAA baseball tournament back after a one-year hiatus because of COVID. Well, the world feels right again, you know, and I'm happy for these kids. Yes. It was a tough time for not just for us as fans and warning college baseball, but just think about what these kids went through. You know, you work so hard and all of a sudden after about 14 to 15 games, the season has ended last year and really, you know, what a lot of summer ball to play. These guys just kind of had to do their own thing and work out and just kind of stay in shape the best they could. But a tough time in a lot of different angles. You know, you lose the year of development. You lose a year of summer ball in some cases. So just a rough time. Right. One-two to Pasqualini, and that's a seeing eye single past the diving Kasovich at short. And it's a two-hit day for Pasqualini. Yeah, love this approach by Pasqualini here. Didn't try to pull this one. Sitting back in the eight hole for Central Connecticut, but watch where the ball is and watch his swing. You youngsters at home, don't try to pull this baseball. Watch the hands go first. He lets it travel deep. He didn't try to pull it. He didn't try to circle it. He simply let the hands go first. The barrel follows it and shoots it right in that five and a half hole for his second base hit of the day. <laughs> I like that, the five and a half hole. That's where it is. <laughs> Wade Boggs made a pretty good living over that five and a half hole right. in his career. This is Matt Bertacci. Tony Gwynn was pretty good over there, too. Yeah, he sure was. Mr. Badre. Nothing and two to Bertacci, who was a strikeout victim of Kafka back in the second inning. Two strikeouts today for Cullen, who's a, a pro prospect, Ben. Wazikowski thinks maybe as high as the third round. Well, you love his size. That's what jumps at you at first. 6'4", 210 pounds. He'll fill out a little bit more. But the sinking fastball's been good. I mean, when he starts it right at the knees, it's got a lot of sink to it. In a time we don't see a lot of two-seamers anymore, Clay, the new thing in baseball now is to grab that four-seamer and with the yeah. high spin rate, if you can do it, and spin it up in the upper quadrant of the strike zone. There's not a whole lot of two-seam guys out there anymore. Eight ground outs, couple of strikeouts. Central was able to score a couple of times in the third as they strung three hits together. And this is a plucky Central bunch. Gritty. A little old school. Kind of like their coach, Charlie Hickey. He knew they weren't going to go out quietly. And there's another base hit. Coming over is Zavala to cut it off. Runners at the corners and one out as the Blue Devils turn the lineup over and the leadoff man Cavino will come up for the third time. Boy, I love the approach by Central Connecticut. Another base hit the opposite way. Watch Pasqualini right here. He sees the play in front of him. Never even thinks about stepping at second base. Just right over the top of the bag as he touches it and on the third base. So first in third for the Blue Devils here. Just one out. Cavino is single in two trips. Second team all Northeast Conference. Had a three hit game in Saturday's conference tournament win over Sacred Heart. A must win game at that point. Again, 
Blue Devils coming through the loser's bracket. The old one is outside, a ball and a strike. And we got to keep an eye on that pitch count now, Ben. As Central has made Kafka earn his outs. Next one will be pitch number 75. It's so important in these tournament games that, you know, the starter of game one gets you fairly deep. You know, the sixth, seventh inning, longer the better, because pitching is the key to winning these tournaments. No doubt. Especially if you get in the loser's bracket. You really got to be deep to come through the loser's bracket. Two and one. But if you're Colin Kafka, you know what you do best, and that's create ground balls. And he's done it today. And he's got a big ground ball double play with the bases loaded and nobody out. He's trying to create yet another ground ball to get the Ducks off the field here. Central Connecticut out hitting Oregon. Two runs on eight hits. Oregon six runs on seven hits, but they've got three home runs. 2-1 pitch. Outside, 31. There's a skipper. Charlie Hickey. Coached at Providence. Don't forget about that. Three years at Providence. 25 years the head coach. He's been to eight NCAA regionals now. Wrong ball. Grant can't make the play. That's going to leak into right field. Another run scores. Going to third is Bertacci, and it's 6-3. to three. Well, there is no quit in this Central Connecticut team for sure. Down 6-2. to two. Watch Gavin Grant leaning a little bit to second baseman. Not a great jump. I thought he had the ball, but almost like he overdove that ball. Watch him lay out right here, but the ball's coming back towards his chest a little bit, and he overdove that ball. It'll go down as a base hit in the RBI, I'm sure, but if you would ask him after the game, that's a ball he probably should have yeah. come up with. It is an RBI single for Cavino, his second hit. Now back-to-back -back innings. Central is able to score against Kafta, and it's 6-3. to three. DeVito a single and a run scored in two trips. Ground ball back to Kapka. He'll go to second for one, to first. No, ball gets away. And another run comes in as Bertacci scores. And what could have been an inning-ending double play instead results in the fourth run for Central Connecticut. Well, Kafka gets his ground ball, and this should have been a play that gets the Ducks off the field. Right back to him. He's got plenty of time to live it over to Kasovich and watch the throw, pulls him off in a swipe tag. I thought at first a runner knocked his ball out, but it wasn't a good throw by Kasovich, the shortstop. He pulls the first base, but Matthews off. And he tries to make a swipe tag, and when he does, the ball gets out of his glove. So what should have been an ending inning double play? Another visit to the mound. And Central Connecticut is pulled to within two. And that's going to do it. Jake Angier, the pitching coach, is going to make the change here. And Cullen Kafka will not survive the fourth inning. His shortest start of the year. Two-run game in Eugene. Ducks comes on a veteran guy, 80 three career appearances and 82 have been out of the pen senior out of canby oregon and i tell you cullen kafka had been so consistent all year long for the ducks he gave up three earned runs or less in 13 of his 14 starts you mentioned it, his shortest outing of the year well i think you got to give Central Connecticut, a lot of credit for this, though. I thought they made some adjustments the second and the third yep. time through the lineup. Laid off some really tough balls. 
A little bit of luck on their side, too. A couple of balls that could have been made, a couple of plays that could have been made that weren't. All of a sudden, Central Connecticut right back in this thing. So a lot of lefties in the Central Connecticut lineup. Now they're going to face a left-hander. We'll see how maybe Charlie Hickey adjusts as this game goes on against a new pitcher now, Telesche. A two-run inning for Central. And one of their best hitters, Noah Martinez, is at the plate now. A couple of hits and a run batted in. He has reached in 19 straight games now. The 0 1. This is down a ball and a strike. Telesche, 32 and two thirds innings pitched, 35 strikeouts, only 13 walks. Strike two. This is a guy who could leave the yard and change this game in a big hurry as you look at Telesche's numbers. You better tread carefully to Martinez. The one two. Got a piece of it. Well, you can see what Telesche likes to do. You see that hard slider. So it kind of starts it just in the strike zone. But as it travels at 60 feet, six inches, he has the ability to work it off the outside corner, work it down just out of the zone. In on the hands, the one two fouled off. Boy, Telesche rode it up and in. Martinez battles to get the foul ball. Well, you get back-to-back -back sliders, and I love this pitch here. Keep them honest. Get a ball in the inside part of the plate. You can see the catcher, Scanlon, kind of raise up, said, give it to me up and in. That's exactly where it's delivered. And it's only going to set up the next pitch, which should be another slider. So you get slider, slider, fastball in to keep them honest. Change the eye level. And I'd be shocked if he didn't come right back with the breaking ball here. Like a fastball on the outside part of the plate, it just missed. Two and two. Telesche on in relief of Kafka. The two-two pitch, up and into Martinez. Full count. And the cleanup hitter Dwayne, who's been on twice, is on deck. This Central Connecticut team is showing its experience right now. Yes. The ability to extend some at-bats, fight off some tough pitches, lay off some other balls, and already nine base hits today, and we're just in the top of the fourth. Three-two. Bouncer to Matthews at first. He'll step on the bag to end the inning. So Central strands one, but they score two back in the game. Down a deuce after three and a half. Hit QQQ. Well, let's give our rewarding performance presented by Capital One to Kenyon Yovan. I know we're only in the fourth inning, but he's already hit two home runs. He's driven in three. The big Oregon Ducks designated hitter, who Mark Wasikowski calls Sasquatch, has stomped his big foot down in this game. Boy, has he been good, huh? And that's kind of what we're seeing for the Ducks so far today. Any ball that's left up out over the plate, these mistake pitches are getting turned around right now. Boy, if you're Fox. So Brandon Fox begins his fourth inning of work. Brandon Fox. Gave up two in the first, two in the second, two in the third. And Tim Buchek comes on in relief. So Fox lasts three innings.
Jack Scanlon one for one with a double and a run scored. Buchek's probably just a one inning guy for Central so it'll be interesting to see how Charlie Hickey bridges these middle innings. Now that Brandon Fox the starter is out of the game. Walked him. Not a good start for Buchek. Leadoff man is aboard. And they'll bring up Gavin Grant. Yeah, Fox ends up going three innings, seven hits. He gave up six runs, only four of which were earned runs. Didn't walk a batter, struck out one. Grant reached with a bunt single back in the second inning. Was thrown out trying to get to second all the way to the backstop and Scanlon now in scoring position and this is kind of disheartening I'm sure for Charlie Hickey the offense gets the Blue Devils back into this game with runs in both the third and the fourth and now the reliever Buchek comes out walks the first man and then a pass ball gets him to second right away yeah, Central Connecticut pitching has had no answer for this Duck offense. Two in the first, two in the second, two in the third. Already a runner at second base and nobody out. It's off the plate. Gavin Grant from Puyallup, Washington. Spent one year at Tacoma Community College before coming to the Ducks. We get a stoppage here as Pat Hall comes out again, the pitching coach. Obviously not liking what he's seeing here early on for Buchek. Yeah, it seems like when Central Connecticut has been able to get some momentum back, the Ducks just come right back and score again. They had a ton of momentum that Central Connecticut going into the bottom half of this inning. There's Charlie Hickey. time Northeast Conference coach of the year Buchek made one appearance in last week's Northeast Conference tournament allowed one run and a hit in Saturday's elimination game with Bryant now picking up a no decision Trying to dial in here in the fourth inning. Yeah, it's a low 90s fastball, breaking ball changeup as well, but you can see he finally gets that fastball in there where he wanted it. Two on pitch to Grant. And shows bunt. Again, knocked down by Loda. He has to chase. This time it stays close enough where Scanlon can it. Yeah, tough chance for Sam Loda there, but he's able to keep it in front. And those are the hardest ones to block. Those fastballs that are spiked well out in front of home plate. 6-4, Oregon leading. First day of the NCAA tournament in the Eugene region. Foul back. And it's a full count. Oregon's going to start their third time through the order here this inning. Already plated six runs. Payoff pitch. Fastball again foul back. Mark Wasikowski. I don't think this is the game we were expecting. I, I didn't, certainly didn't expect with the, as good as the pitching's been for both of these teams. I didn't expect this early in the game to have 10 runs and 16 hits. Pasqualini throws out Grant over to third goes Scanlon. There's one down. 
Yeah, I'd agree with you. And the appearances by both Fox and Kafka, they were short outings. The shortest of the year for Kafka, three and two thirds, and Fox goes three. Here's Tanner Smith again. Reached on an error and scored in the first and grounded out in the second. He's 0 for 2. Club to the right side. And that is going to be a productive out as Smith brings Scanlon home to make it 7 to 4, Oregon. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised Central Connecticut did not bring their infield in trying to prevent that if you did get the ground ball. Chose to stay back. And that's a good piece of hitting by Tyler Smith right at the top of the lineup. You always take what the defense gives you. And he realized, hey, if I can just hit a ground ball to one of the middle infielders, we're going to play yet another one run. And he was able to execute that. So here's Yovan, who has been a wrecking crew of one in this game a two run homer in the first a solo shot in the third now 16 home runs on the year that is an Oregon single season record big swing and a miss nothing in two boy he was looking for another one there well he's one of these guys he's not getting cheated and why would he after the first two swings he had two swings two home runs but you could already tell where he likes the ball up out over the plate and fastballs too. So back to back breaking balls get to count 0 2 for Buchek. We'll see if he can finish him. It's a foul ball. So Oregon has scored in every inning today and in 10 of their last 13 innings overall. This is a well-oiled offense right now for Mark Wazikowski. Get on the hands, didn't mean to. It's going to roll foul. It almost looked like the catcher for Central Connecticut. Loda had set up on the outside part of the plate. This is a good fastball right in on the hands. That should just open up the outside part of the plate again, either for a fastball away or maybe he goes back to the breaking ball. That's how he got the first two strikes. Eighth NCAA tournament for Oregon. Their first since 2015. They went one and two at the Springfield, Missouri regional that year. It's the sixth NCAA tournament bid since this program was brought back to life 12 years ago. Soft ground ball. Pasqualini will get Yovan out for the first time. But the Ducks get another one. They've got a lead of three after four. Oye, ¿quieres una cerveza? Un beamy ginger highball refrescante. Jim Beam, refresco de jengibre, toque de lima. Eso suena mejor. <laughs> Salud. <laughs> Folks, the world's first fully autonomous vehicle is almost at the finish line. Today we're going to fine tune the dynamic braking system. Woo! What a ride. <laughs> I invested in Invesco QQQ, a fund that invests in the innovators of the NASDAQ 100. Like you. You don't have to be a deep learning engineer to help make the world a smarter place. Does it come in blue? Become an agent of innovation with Invesco QQQ. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Off we go to the fifth inning in Eugene, Oregon. Boy, you love the shots from around PK Park here in Eugene. As we take a look at the game summary, 7-4 Oregon leading the number 14 national seed. of this game has been the home runs for the Ducks. 
two by Yovan, one by Anthony Hall. They have scored in every inning and lead it by three. This one fouled back by Dwayne. Dwayne is single in the first to walk in the third. As Central Connecticut has four runs on nine hits, they've made it interesting. It's just the offense of Oregon hasn't been able to be stopped in any inning today. Swing and a miss is Teleshev, who came on to get Martinez for the last out of the fourth. Gets the strikeout to start the fifth. Here's that game summary we're talking about, presented by Capital One. Cavino, Martinez, two for three. Both have a run batted in. All nine hits are singles for the Blue Devils. Meanwhile, it's been the big fly bend for Oregon. Yeah, and Oregon's a team. We talk about their physicality and how they've gotten much stronger in the weight room, and boy, it has shown up today. That's kind of the difference. Loader sends it foul. He's 0 for 2 with a ground out. And he hit into a double play in the third. Interesting to know, Ben, what words of wisdom Andy Lopez had for Mark Wasikowski. Uh, those guys talk every day. Of course, he played for Coach Lopez at Pepperdine back in the 90s, won a College World Series. Coached under him as an assistant at Florida and at Arizona. Mm -hmm. He's been a big time mentor for Coach Waz. Yeah, I think if you go across the country and talk to college baseball coaches, they all have somebody they like to bump stuff off of and, yeah. you know, bump things off of. I think it, it helps in a lot of different situations because when you have another coach that you can bump stuff off of, it always helps you get a different perspective. You might not necessarily agree with it all the time, but at least it puts different thoughts in your mind. But at the end of the day, you just hope you prepare your team, and that's what a 50- or 60-game schedule does is get you prepared for the postseason. Kind of know who you are and what you do best and, and that's kind of the message is stay within the stuff that made you successful in order to be one of the 64 still playing loader draws a walk he's aboard for the first time today as matthews comes up wazikowski got his first head coaching job at purdue back in 2017 took the boilermakers to a regional back in 18. This is his first time in the national tournament with the Ducks. As Matthews sends this one into foul ground. One and one. Matthews is 0 for 2. There's Coach Wise. And he's been really a good fit back here in Eugene where he spent so much time under George Horton as an assistant. When he took over back in 2019, and he, he'll admit it, it didn't look so good for a while. In fact, they got beat in a fall scrimmage by a local community college. And he, he was kind of worried. He said, what have I gotten myself into? But, boys, he turned it around quickly. Yeah, and it didn't take long. Always known as a good recruiter, and he has some talent. No doubt. Three and one to Matthews. The throw to first. Colin Kafka started this game for the Ducks. Goes three and two thirds, his shortest outing of the year. And Nico Teleche, in his first full inning of relief, got him to chase it up. It's now full count. LSU and Gonzaga coming up later tonight from Eugene. That'll be a 10 o'clock Eastern start, 7 Pacific time. 
the Ducks were supposed to face the Zags three times this year, but COVID got in the way. They played just once in Oregon won. Swung out and missed as Telesche gets Matthews to go down on strikes. Two away. Well, Telesche is showing you a good fastball right now. He got his first strikeout. He got Buddy Dwayne with a good fastball on the inside part of the plate for the first out here in the fifth inning. And 3 1, you get a 3 2, and then another fastball right by Matthews picks up his second strikeout of the inning. And now here's Mike Tornero, the left fielder. Swung out and missed. Tornero. 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs, each on the first pitch. He's 5 foot 6, but one of the toughest players in the Northeast Conference. Just a spark plug. And he's going to get a base hit here, maybe extra bases. Rounding first hard and then slamming on the brakes is Tornero. Now he'll go for 2. The throw is late. Loda gets into third ahead of him. Now two on with two out for Central Connecticut. That scrappiness again, Ben, coming through here for the Blue Devils. Love the read by Tornero who gets a base hit right here. Tornero shoots this ball out right over to third baseman Nowitzki's head. But going first to third and watch Tornero. Nice backdoor slide, so he reads the throw. When the throw game went into third base, he decided to take an extra 90 feet, move up from first to second. And now base hit will score two. Trying to push it is Pasqualini with the bunt. Pasqualini, a couple of base hits in this game. He's also scored. Yeah, we always talk about production down at the bottom of your lineup, and that's what the teams you see when you get to the NCAA tournament, the ones that can give you a little pressure and be productive one through nine are the ones that you see normally advance. The bottom part of this lineup so far by Central Connecticut, three base hits out of the eight and nine hole. Pasqualini now in an eight-game hitting streak. That's down and away. Two for six, four runs batted in with runners in scoring position for the Blue Devils in this one. Check this that swing. Good. That's a foul yep. tip. One and two. That's a good hard slider by Telesche. We've seen a good fastball. It's a low 90s fastball with a really tight slider behind it. The one two to Pasqualini. Lifted into right center, and it's going to get down for a hit. One run is in. Coming in to score is Tornero, and it's now 7-6. to six. Pasqualini does it again. He drives in two with his third hit of the day. Boy, and I love this approach by Pasqualini. Not trying to do too much with two strikes. Watch him just simply go out and try to find the barrel. Doesn't do too much, but his idea is, you know what? I'm not going to strike out. I'm going to figure out a way to put a bat on a ball and watch him go down and get this ball. That's an excellent job of hitting. He just simply dumps it out in center field and pushes home two runs. And how about the game now? Seven to <laughs> six here in the top of the fifth. This Central Connecticut team has shown great character, not just today, but throughout the entire postseason. They went 4-1 and one in the NEC tournament, coming through the loser's bracket to beat the favorite Bryant on back-to-back -back days. And playing inspired baseball here again in the NCAA tournament. Well, winning breeds confidence, and you can see a confident group right now. You mentioned they won eight of their 10 conference series. They won 14 of their last 18 games coming in. And another visit to the mound by Jake Angier, the Ducks pitching coach. 
And we'll see what he's going to do with Telesche. That's it. So Central Connecticut forcing a second pitching change before the end of the fifth inning. Back in Eugene in a moment. Magenta. 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 The Epson Eco Tank. No more cartridges. Just lots of ink. Print whatever makes you happy. The Epson Eco Tank. Just fill and chill. Our life as a family revolves around football. Being a football kid, I believe, is just being a leader. And as parents, we have to look at our children and say, okay, we can see what's in you. And it's our job to help bring that out of you. It's a beautiful feeling. Hey, a quick reminder that Squeeze Play has you covered. All the latest from the NCAA regional scores, highlights, live coverage. Matt Schick and Mike Rooney are manning the studio right now. And they're going to keep the information flowing all weekend on the ESPN app. Chris Button will also be in there helping out in the studio. Squeeze Play is featuring up to four live games simultaneously. So if you want a broad brush coverage of this tournament, we recommend Squeeze Play. All right, so here's Isaac Aon making his 21st appearance of the year as the Ducks have been forced to go to the bullpen twice in this game already. Yeah. Yeah, you can see more hits innings pitch, but how about the strikeouts? More strikeouts innings pitch, so Aon's a guy that can definitely strike you out. I'll tell you right now, Central Connecticut couldn't do anything the first two innings, but since then, two in the third, two in the fourth, and two in the fifth so far. Big spot for the freshman, Aon, out of Fresno, California. He is allowed just three of 16 inherited runners to score. There's a runner at first in Pasqualini, who just drove in two moments ago. Bertacci fouls this one off. Oregon by a run. And it's so important to get out to a great start in this tournament. Since 2014, only five teams have lost game one and still won the region. And four of those teams were playing at home. It is a difficult chore to come back if you lose game one. And perhaps that's why we saw Angier make another quick pitching change as Telesche was starting to falter in the fifth. Yeah, I think Angier just looking for somebody that can get out. And I have been super impressed with Central Connecticut. Their approach at the plate has been really good. They don't chase many balls out of the zone. They make adjustments quickly. You can see that. And I think that's a lot to do with the veteran lineup that they have. A lot of guys that's been around. We've already seen a national seed get upset today. South Florida beat the Florida Gators 5-3 to three in the Gainesville Regional. Two two to Bertacci inside out swing foul back. He's one for two with a single and a run score. And Aon's one of those big arms that come out of this Oregon bullpen. It's a fastball to get up to 95, 96. He'll sit about 93. Breaking mm -hmm. ball got him, and Bertacci knew it. But two more. For the Blue Devils. And it's a one run game. Magenta. I hate cartridges. Not magenta, not magenta. I'm not going back to the store. Magenta! Cartridges are so. The Epson Eco Tank. No more cartridges. It comes with an incredible amount of ink that can save you a lot of frustration. <laughs> Yep. Coming from the big Ben McDonald watching this one from Eugene, Oregon opening round of the national tournament We go to the bottom of the fifth and most of the damage done for the Ducks coming from the two and six spot in the order Yovan and Hall Yovan a couple of homers Hall has a homer and combined they have five runs batted in Meanwhile Central Connecticut all of their hits 
And there have been 11 of them have been singles, Ben, but they're right in this game, down just a run. Yeah, they've come up with some big base hits, too. There's Charlie Hickey, the veteran coach for the Blue Devils. He told us this week, we're going to scrap. We're not going to be afraid. They went to Fort Worth and played in the TCU Regional in 17. They went to Arkansas, played in the Fayetteville Regional in 19. And here they are again in the NCAA field. Zavala fouls it back. He's one for two with a single and a run score. Yeah, you just get the feeling that if Buchek could go out there and hang some zeros, and maybe put up a couple zeros up in a row, the way Central is swinging it right now, they could very well take the lead in this ball game. Hit sharply. Backhanded by Pasqualini. He'll throw to first. And Zavala is retired. That's a big out because the leadoff man has been able to get aboard every inning for the Ducks until now. To me, that's always the most important out for a pitcher is the first out of every inning. If you get the first out of every inning, the chance of the team scoring goes way down from there. That is four straight ground ball outs thrown by Buchek to the second baseman. Four straight, four three put outs after giving up the leadoff walk to Scanlon. Here's Gabe Matthews, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a flyout. Gabe Matthews has been a great fielding first baseman, won a gold glove for the Ducks back in 2019. I mean, you played for a long time. Having solid defense behind you can sure put a pitcher at ease, especially at first base considering how many chances they get. It means everything because if you got the defense behind you, you're not as scared of contact as a pitcher, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with two ground balls and a pop-up. But sometimes when your defense makes a lot of errors, you feel like, okay, I can't let them hit it. You know, I got to strike everybody out, and that puts a lot of pressure on you. And the most important position on the field to me is the catcher. You know, the, to have a good catcher that can frame, but he can block pitches, and I got to be able to trust yep. him. When I need a strikeout with a runner at third and less than two, I can bounce a breaking ball and know that he's going to keep it in front. Yeah. Good, A.B. Walked him. So the second walk allowed by Buchek. And last inning, Scanlon was able to come around to score. So that's a big base runner here for the Ducks in the fifth inning. With Kasevich coming up now. You had a great catcher at LSU and Mike Bianco, who's now, of course, the head coach at Ole Miss. And the Rebels are hosting a regional this weekend at Oxford. Big cut by Kasevich, he fouls it off. It's pretty good catchers in this game. We've seen Sam Loder throw out Gavin Grant back in the second inning. And Jack Scanlon has already been on twice and scored twice. He has a double to his credit. And he's been pretty good behind the plate. For Oregon, despite taking one off the kneecap early in this game. Bujak comes set, the 1 1. That's through, that's through. And that is going to be through into left field for a base hit. Matthews will stop at second. Kasevich with his second hit of the day. Two on, one out, and Anthony Hall, who already has a homer, comes up with a chance to do more damage for Oregon. Well, you mentioned Oregon have scored in every inning of the game so far. Yeah, it's, it's like at this point in the game, it's who can put up the next zero is probably going to do themselves a great favor as far as going on to win this game. 
We just haven't seen these offenses stopped in a long time for either team. Well, you mentioned the ground balls that buchek has been getting, and he'd love to get another one right here to give that defense a chance to turn a double play. There's strike pitch down and away. Hall with his solo homer in the second, an RBI fielder's choice in the third. Two on, one out. Oregon leading 7 6 here in the bottom of the fifth. Look out. Loden's able to stop it, pounce on it. You can see where Hall stands in that batter's box. He's got that left foot, that left toe really, really close to home plate. See that painted line? He's got that left toe just sitting right on it. That tells you he likes to get the ball, looking for the ball away out over the plate. The ball he hit for a home run back in the second inning left a vapor trail. I mean, it just screamed out of here to right field. It kind of looked like the old Tiger Woods two iron taken off. Yeah, pretty much. Two one pitch, breaking ball, and that's in there. Strike two. Boy, as a pitcher, when you can begin to do that and pitch backwards, meaning if you throw something other than a fastball in a fastball count, and Buchek lands a perfect breaking ball to get himself right back into the count two two. Because now, if you're Hall, you're not sure what's coming. All right, is he gonna throw me another breaking ball? Is he gonna throw me a fastball? Scooped by Loder, and now a full count. And he has to be careful here to Hall. Yeah, this is one of these situations in the ballgame you're not giving in. You know what Hall did his first at bat in the second inning. Hit the home run that you're talking about. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes right back. He threw that 2-1 breaking ball. Can he land it 3-2? So here's that home run back in the second inning. It led off the inning. A solo shot. They would score two ultimately to make it 4-0. Yeah, Brandon that Fox at the fastball just right out over the center of the plate. Looking for fastball. He got one and certainly didn't miss it. His fifth of the year. Now the 3-2 pitch. Lifted. Left field. Going deep. Warning track, looking up, Tornero's not going to get it. Goodbye, home run. Second of the game for Anthony Hall. This time opposite field, and it's a three-run shot as Oregon takes a 10-6 lead. Wow. And again, he threw him the fastball, and I still don't know why he threw him the fastball, because he showed you the first time up, but watch this swing. This ball is away from him, an inside-out swing, so the hands go first. Here comes the barrel, and this is opposite field. Almost looks like a fly ball off the bat, kind of what it was, but it happened to carry just over the fence, and this one's a weaver. A three-run shot, and Oregon answers right back, now up 10-6. to six. Mm. The power of Hall to take it out to the opposite field. Five runs batted in for Anthony Hall. Yeah, because all not we heard. Start in, go ahead. All we heard about PK Park, right? It's not a ballpark you can hit a lot of home runs in. Well, it is played small today for the Oregon Ducks. Hall just four home runs during the regular year, but two today. And the Ducks have a little breathing room once again. That's outside to Nowitzki, who's 0 for 2. It's 3 and 1. Ten runs on nine hits now for Oregon. They have scored in every inning. 
batting averages are going up and so are the ERAs today. <laughs> First five guys in this Ducks batting order batting well over 300. This one is skied to right. Long run. Matthews coming on. Lays out. Won't get it. Nowitzki is going to get into second base with a bloop double. His first hit. I'm wondering if Matthews got, didn't get a good read on this ball out in right field. You can look where Matthews is. Top of your screen, far right. He is playing deep near the warning track. This is a fly ball. And he's coming as fast as he can. I'm still not too sure why, Clay, he was playing as deep as he was. He just didn't have time to get to that one. And that's going to be all for Buchek as Central Connecticut is going to make a change with one out here in the fifth inning. Three run homer by Hall has made it 10 to 6 Ducks. Oye, ¿quieres una cerveza? Cerveza sin sabor. O un bimi ginger highball refrescante. Jim Beam, refresco de jengibre, toque de lima. Eso suena mejor. <laughs> Salud. <laughs> Our life as a family revolves around football. Being a football kid, I believe, is just being a leader. And as parents, we have to look at our children and say, okay, we can see what's in you. And it's our job to help bring that out of you. It's a beautiful feeling. Well, Central Connecticut hasn't been able to stop this Oregon offense. They're going to try here with a freshman left-hander, Dominic Nyman, making his 17th appearance of the year. <laughs> Nowitzki's at second after a double. One out and Jack Scanlon at the plate. Takes a cut at the first pitch and man, he's going to be in the ice tub after this game he took a pitch off his left knee and now he fouled one off his front foot mm. scanlon with a double in the second a walk and a run scored in the fourth Nyman misses upstairs, one ball and one strike. This one's popped up on the infield. The first baseman, Martinez, is going to call everybody off and make the catch for the second out. That'll bring up Gavin Grant, the nine-hole hitter. So Dominic Nyman coming on in relief here, the third pitcher for the Blue Devils. Fox started. Brandon Fox went three innings. We've seen Buchek in the interim, and now Nyman. He was really good on Saturday in the elimination game against Sacred Heart in the NEC tournament. Four innings, gave up a run, just a couple of hits. And I'm guessing that they're hoping he can kind of settle in here for a good bit. Maybe quiet these Oregon bats. No one's been able to do it up to now. Well, he's been, been one of the better pitchers as of late. His last three outings, he's picked up two saves, has Nyman. Breaking ball missed off the plate. It's two and one. The biggest problem, Ben, for Buchek while he was in is 
he walked a couple of guys. And that's yep. been the strength of the bullpen for Central. They just really haven't walked a lot of hitters. Buchak got himself into some jams. 2-1. And again, it goes to the backstop, sneaking through Sam Loden. Over to third is Nowitzki, and Loda now is even looking into his glove going, what's the matter here? Yeah, so one got underneath him early. One kicked off his glove, and take a look at this one. Yeah, it's just a fastball down, and it hits right at the bottom of the webbing, just on the edge, it just gets underneath him. You know, sometimes with a runner at second base, catchers will see the ball coming towards home plate and kind of take a look at that runner out at second base, and maybe just for a second he took his eyes off. And Nyman comes in and walks Grant after getting Scanlon to pop out. So Central went six games this year without allowing a walk, 19 games with two or less. And here they've already walked three ducks, and we're not into the sixth inning yet. Strike. This is Tanner Smith, 0 for 3 for the leadoff man, but he does have a run batted in. away from Loader and it's going to score Nowitzki from third and it's 11 to 6. Well I, I don't know I, what's going on with Loda. you know I, I don't know if he got crossed up on that I don't know why he would have got crossed up with nobody out at second base but he is clearly just not seeing the ball right now and look he's been really good this year. Mm. And that's a big run. They're all big, but in this game where it's clear that it's going to come down to who can score the most runs and not, you know, the defense winning it, because we have not seen these offenses stopped. Well, I think that's that makes it a full run inning. Yeah, for head coach Charlie Hickey, is his defense has really been the difference maker for him yeah. all year long, and his defense has not been solid today. That hit him. So now Smith is aboard. As Nyman comes in and as Walk Grant hits Smith after getting the leadoff man to pop out. Two on, two out, and Yovan, who already has two home runs in his pocket, has a chance to just tear a hole in this game. How about those numbers, huh? 325, 16, and 54. Big cut. Found it back. That's not a swing saying I'm just feeling for it. That's a swing saying, you know what, I'm trying to knock it lopsided like he's done twice already today. Yovan is an amazing story. Was a pitcher up until 2019 that has reinvented himself as one of the best power hitters in the country, and he may have done it again. Warning track. Matthews is able to get there and make the catch. The Ducks send nine to the plate, score four, and it's now 11-6 after five. We're going to a dimension where I always win. <laughs> Streaming June 18th on Disney Plus. Everything good is above the surface. The sky, clouds. Relax. Breathe. <laughs> this is gonna be the best summer ever. Come on, faster! There's something fishy with you two. You're hiding something. Where did you boys say you were from? <laughs> Disney and Pixar's Luca. Ready PG. Streaming June 18th. Game one of the Eugene Regional presented by Capital One and Oregon has 
put up another crooked number, and it's now 11-6. to Alongside the College Baseball Hall of Famer Ben McDonald, I'm Clay Matvick. And Ben, Mark Wasikowski has built a more offensive Ducks program. It's only his second year, his first full year, but there is no doubt that this is a different style of Oregon baseball than maybe what we've become used to. Yeah, not a whole lot of bunting and stealing bases. It's been power ball today, you know, and, and they had 48 home runs coming in, which is not a big number, but it's pretty good. But they showed up big today with the long ball. And that's kind of been the difference is four home runs, a three run shot there in the last inning. And, and that's what's been impressive. And look, it's been top to bottom, too. If you look at the lineup and the numbers they put up, everybody is contributing one through nine. Dan Covino to lead it off. He is the leadoff man for Central Connecticut State. The DH, couple of hits. And that's the thing about Central Connecticut. They've, they've hit it well themselves. 11 hits. They've scored six runs. The fielding has let them down a little bit. Swung on, tried to hold up. But Covino goes down on strikes for the first time today. And Isaac Aon has his second strikeout. Aon yeah, came president. on in the fifth yeah, inning and got Bertacci to end the inning. So back-to-back -back K's for him going back to last inning. That'll bring up DeVito. Yeah, the first one was impressive. And then he gets a strikeout looking. Bertacci, you mentioned it. And it's a big arm. We talked to Coach, to Coach Kaz the other day. He said, listen, he said, this is a big arm. He's up to 95. He can push 96 from time to time. And he has no fear. And you can see the way he's prancing around the mound right now. He is feeling it. Kafka started, went three and two thirds. Teleshe, the lefty, went an inning. And now Aon nearly sends that one to the backstop. One and two here to Jay DeVito. Got a single in three trips. He's driven in a run. Flicks this one foul. So Central Connecticut down five, but they have scored two in each of the last three innings. Can never count this team out. That's down in the turf, two and two. This is a program that went to Fort Worth, went to Fayetteville, had good showings in their last two NCAA tournament appearances. And rides in a full count. You, you just know that they're not done yet, Ben. No chance. I mean, they've already proven that. They were down 4 nothing, came back and scored two. Then Oregon scored two in the bottom of the third. So they went down 6-2, to two, and yet they come right back and scored two in the fourth and two in the fifth as well. And this is hit well by DeVito toward the gap. It gets down. DeVito rounding first, chugging for second, and then he stops and goes back to first base. Wise decision for DeVito. You can see he's talking with Franklin Jennings, the first base coach. He wanted to, but wisely decided at the last second against him. Yeah, I love the aggressiveness. A hard turnaround first. He's thinking two right there, but with the play in front of you, you don't need a coach. You can kind of read it yourself. And he saw the throw come into second base and said, you know what, I better put the brakes on and he scampers back to first. So still no extra base hits for Central Connecticut. All 12 of their hits today have been singles. Martinez has two of them. He's two for three. It's down and in, a ball and a strike to the big first baseman. First base runner allowed by Aon. And this is off the plate there. Two and one to Martinez. Mm. Two and two. A string on that one. Yeah, how about that change up? So you got a mid 90s fastball and you take a little bit off and out in front was Martinez. Check swing poked it foul. The Central Connecticut group 
went into the conference tournament playing outstanding baseball. They won 10 of their last 13 regular season games. And then went 4-1, and one, coming through the loser's bracket to beat the favorite Bryant in the conference tournament final. Popped into short center. Kasovic, the shortstop, back on the outfield turf, makes the grab. Looking into that sunshine, and there are two outs. Here's Buddy Dwayne now. And Dwayne was the MVP of that Northeast Conference tournament. Nine hits in 19 at bats, couple of homers, drove in eight in those five games. And he has shown well here today, already has a hit, has been on base twice. I'm liking these central uniforms too, kind of Toronto Blue Jays esque. Yeah, yeah. I mean, after all, the Ducks get so much talk about their uniforms and the number of styles that they wear, but. Uh, I don't know, Central's got a good look, too. Boy, Buddy Dwayne just looks like a ball player. Yeah, he, he looks does. good on him. And how about that black eye he's got, too? Looks like he's got a little mouse underneath his eye, too. Probably took a ground ball. He just looks like a ball player. He's not liking that breaking ball by Aeon right now. Aeon's got ahead of him with two really good ones. Ooh, tried to get strike three with a fastball at the knees and missed down two and two. Love that sequence. Breaking ball, breaking ball. Then you try to hit the inside corner with a plus fastball and just missed down. That's inside. Now a full count to Dwayne. Dwayne was on that Fayetteville all tournament team in 2019. Hit a home run. At Baum Stadium in Arkansas, 385, couple of ribbies in those three games. Payoff pitch, breaking ball, misses outside, and Dwayne coaxes a two-out walk. There are two on for Sam Loda. And we'll see if they're going to send up a pinch hitter. There were a couple of guys in the on-deck circle, but it will be Loda hitting for himself. So a couple of strikeouts right away, Ben, for Aeon, but now he's giving up hits to DeVito, a walk to Dwayne as he deals to Loader. Yeah, he got a hit with the breaking balls his last time up to Dwayne, but then tried to go inside with two fastballs. It missed pretty bad, and then 3-2 breaking ball, he couldn't land. Third pitcher to work for Oregon today, the 1-0. And now he's behind 2-0. I mean, these central Connecticut hitters are very patient, good eyes at the plate. We saw them work Kafka's pitch count high before he left after three and two-thirds. The 2-0 pitch. He had the green light, fouled it back. Yeah, Central's approach at the plate to me has been impressive. And the way yeah. they have extended it bats as well. And if you watch them, they don't swing at many bad pitches. And they really work the pitchers. And a really good understanding of the strike zone. 29th pitch of the inning for Aon here. The 2-1. Hit on the hands. Popped up. And it's going to drift out of play. Swung on, sprayed down the line, and again, foul. But also a good approach for Loda, and I'm sure he would like to redeem himself, Ben. It, it hasn't been a banner day behind the dish for the Central Connecticut catcher. 
No, what we heard about him is he was really good behind home plate. We saw the arm. I mean, he did throw out a runner easily. But several balls has gotten by that normally don't get by him. That's a really good swing. But just get the feeling that Central's going to climb back in this one. It's going to be because yeah. they had a, a couple of long balls. I mean, that's what's missing right now. You mentioned all the singles. Every one of their base hits, all 12 of them have been singles. The difference is Oregon's got four home runs. That's outside. It's now full count to Loda, who has just one home run on the year, but it was a big one. It came in last Saturday night's elimination game against Bryant in the NEC tournament. Here comes the 3 2. Ground ball back to Aeon. He spears it. And that ends the inning. The Blue Devils strand two in the sixth. Para nosotros es un power converter. Para ti es energía. Desconectate para reconectar con la Bronco Sport. Our life as a family revolves around football. Being a football kid, I believe, is just being a leader. And as parents, we have to look at our children and say, okay, we can see what's in you. And it's our job to help bring that out of you. It's a beautiful feeling. Let's get you an update from the Tucson Regional. UC Santa Barbara getting a great outing from Rodney Boone. He struck out 11 Oklahoma State Cowboys today. And the big bats, including Marcos Castanon for the Gauchos. 14 to 4, the final as the three seed beats the two seed. And Oklahoma State came into the national tournament, Ben, riding pretty high, getting healthy, probably the healthiest they'd been in two months. And run into a buzzsaw here in game one of the national tournament. Oh, another big fly. This time Zavala. Is he going to get it out of here? You bet. Home run. Fourth of the day. Make that fifth of the day for Oregon. And Zavala leads off the sixth inning with a solo shot. Well, I tell you what. The Oregon Ducks are missing nothing today. If it's left middle, out over the plate, it's getting turned around in a hurry. And Aaron Zavala, the Pac-12 Player of the Year, he gets in on the home run party. That is a season high for the Ducks. Five home runs in one game. Coach Waz got to be pretty happy about what he's seeing about right now <laughs> as far as his offense goes. Such a great lineup, the balance, the average, the power, the speed. And this is a team to be reckoned with. And the experience, too. Don't forget yeah. that. I mean, it's a bunch of guys that's been around the block once or twice. You go through the Pac-12 conference, a very good conference. And you win 20 games, you know you got a good team. And I got to remind people, this was the team picked to finish seventh in the Pac-12. And that's going to be down and a walk for Gabe Matthews, his second walk. As Nyman has walked two now, also hit a bat. And he's been a one or two inning guy at the most for Charlie Hickey this year. We'll see how much rope he has given here in the sixth inning. Yeah, I think both of these coaches are a little bit concerned right now because they're having to go through some pitchers. And whether you're LSU or Gonzaga sitting back, you got to be liking what you're seeing. Oh. 
Strike one to Kasevich. A couple of hits his last two times to the plate. He's two for three. Going to take this one step further for the Oregon Ducks. Five home runs. That's a season high. It's also a program high. That is the most home runs they have ever hit in a game at Oregon. And there is still a lot of ball here. We've had some four home run games in the past. Never five. Again, it speaks to how Mark Wasikowski has changed this program. But when Guy he told us been... yesterday they've gotten more physical. He was yep. not lying. It's a breaking pitch in there for strike three as Kasevich goes down for the first out of the sixth. Yeah, he wanted to build a program that could compete. Outside of the Pac-12 with the stronger, bigger programs, and he said this this team needed to get bigger and more physical. And wow, has it? Including this guy, Anthony Hall, two home runs. As another one gets away, Loda again having to hoof after it. Well, the way the game is changing, Clay, you know. You got to be able to hit home runs today. No, you have to hit a bunch of them because you can have a complete offense and do a little bit of anything. But one of the bullets you got to have in your belt is the ability to hit the long ball occasionally. And the teams that can consistently hit the long ball but can do other things as well. We talk about University of Texas. You talk about Arkansas. Talk about Tennessee. Some of our top eight national seeds. Boy, somebody pour some water on Anthony Hall. That is his third hit. He has driven in six today, and it's now 13 to six ducks. And I mean, he seems to be getting everything on the barrel. None of it's cheap. Have a day, Anthony Hall. Three for four, six RBIs, two home runs. And another pitching change. Because that's going to be it for Nyman. Oregon has scored two or more runs in every inning except the fourth, where they scored just one. Peyton Stevens coming in. And while we have a chance to remind you about that game coming up later tonight, the two seed in this regional Gonzaga, champs out of the West Coast Conference, will take on the LSU Tigers, the three seed here in the regional. Ben, uh, LSU was a bubble team at the end of the year and went out early in the SEC tournament, lost to Georgia in the first game, and they were sweating it on Memorial Day, but they got in ultimately and a chance to send Paul Maneri out in the right way. He has announced his retirement as head coach after 15 years at LSU, and they would like nothing more than to give him one more trip to Omaha. Well, no doubt about that. You know, and it's been a disappointing year in some ways for LSU, a team that was supposed to do better. But you got to give Paul Maneri credit, too. I mean, they had to win their final three conference series to even be mentioned and get an opportunity to get into postseason play. And they did that. They won their final three series. Now, disappointing, they lose to Georgia. Uh, and But all in all, Paul Maneri, look, it's a Hall of Fame career. He's one of five coaches in the history of college baseball to have over 1,500 wins and a national title. He's the seventh winning his coach in the history of our game. And look what he's done in the conference tournament. Six-time tournament champion, six-time SEC champion. He made six College World Series appearances. 63 years old, he said uh, he's a bit relieved after making the announcement. He's dealt with some health issues in recent years. Uh, his father passed away a couple of years ago. It, it, it's been getting tougher on him. 
hardest thing he's ever done to announce his retirement, but he, he has felt some relief since doing it on May 28th. Now, yeah. he wants to see his team give him one more ride to Omaha. We'll see if that can happen starting here in Eugene later tonight against Gonzaga. And that will not be an easy game for LSU. Gonzaga, maybe the best team in the West Coast Conference over the last decade, according to many who have watched that league tightly. No doubt. And most people felt like Gonzaga had a real chance to be a top 16 seed. Uh, they yes. lost their final two games of the year, and they kind of dropped out of that, but they have been really good. Nowitzki the punt. And he's out. Going over to second there is Anthony Hall, but Nowitzki perfectly placed bunt. Could yeah, beat it out. Love the play by DeVito to third baseman. He recognized the square around very quickly. He comes flying in, bare hands this ball, and a good, strong throw across the diamond. So there you go. You talk about your complete team, you know, a team that can do a little bit of everything. We've seen Oregon bunt a couple times today. We've seen them take an extra 90 feet. Yeah. We've seen them play defense. And, of course, the long ball we have seen plenty of. Scanlon down the line and foul. They have used the entire field too, Ben. We've seen some opposite field home runs. We have seen them hit for extra bases to the opposite field. They've sprayed it all over. No, it's, it's been impressive. I mean, the only thing that hadn't been impressive is the pitching, and that's been a little bit of a disappointment. But look, when you can bang it like they have today, you'll take wins any way you can get them when it comes to the NCAA tournament. The 0-1 and another one that gets away from Loda. And the Ducks will take third as Hall is in there safely. Boy, at second base, you always anticipate. Anytime you're on the bases, anticipate a ball bouncing. You can see a pretty good read right there. Anthony Hall saw the ball was going to bounce. Gets away from the catcher. He takes an extra 90 feet. Now in Lotus defense, that one was ruled a wild pitch, but I'm sure that Charlie Hickey's thinking, man, uh, my veteran catcher has not had his best day. And it's really out of character for Sam Loda, the game he's having. The 1-1. That's down. 2-1. Scanlon, a couple of runs scored, had a double back in the second. Peyton Stevens, the fourth pitcher today for the Blue Devils of Central Connecticut. He's been one of their best bullpen arms. And gets a strikeout here to end the sixth. Well, the Oregon Ducks have been on fire today from an offensive standpoint. There's a home run. Yovan gets two of them. Anthony Hall with two of them and firing the Pac-12 player of the year. Zavala gets in on it with a three-run shot of his own. We're going to a dimension where I always win. <laughs> Next week on What Day Is It Anyway, you and your friends go to B-Dubs and play new plays and trivia. Team up every Wednesday night to win season prizes like 50K and a trip to Vegas. And no, you can't buy the Buffalo. Buffalo Wild Wings. Matt Schick and Mike Rooney back in the studio right now. They are taking care of squeeze play for you on the ESPN app, featuring up to four live games simultaneously so if you want a kind of a broader coverage of this tournament we recommend squeeze play scores highlights live coverage all the latest from the NCAA regionals here's Rio Britain now for Oregon yeah Britain's been pretty good this year you look at the ERA 1.8 15 innings pitch only eight hits he's punched out 18 and walked eight
think Isaac Aon did a pretty good job. He kept Central Connecticut State off the board in the sixth inning, and that was huge. I mean, because as good as Oregon has been offensively, Central Connecticut has been able to put up two runs in the third, fourth, and fifth, but finally Aon kept him off the board in the sixth. Yeah, he was good. He showed the big arm that we'd heard about, too. Fastball was lightning up to 95 and then showed a change up in a breaking ball as well. Dave Matthews followed by Tornero and Pasquilini, 6, 7, and 8. Swing and a miss. One and two. Kenyon Yovan with a couple of home runs today for the Ducks. Zovala with a homer. Anthony Hall with two homers. Deep to center, reaching up as Hall can't get it. Matthews is going to get into second with hit number 13 of the day for Central, but their first extra base hit. Well, Central just keeps on coming. Anthony Hall has been busy today with the bat. Do you see him? He's a big guy out in center field. He looks the part and leaps up and just over his glove. This is Tornero now with a single and a run scored his last time up. Rio Britton on now. The left-hander has pitched no more than two innings all year. He's hung zeros in 12 of his 14 appearances. Gets the ground ball here, charging is Nowitzki. Strong throw. Gets Tornero. Matthews goes to third on the play. There's one out. So LSU is in the house. The Tigers will take on Gonzaga coming up at 10 Eastern time. Nine Central and seven in the Pacific time zone. And that will be on ESPNU. There's Nolan Kane. One down for Pasqualini, who has three hits today. A couple of runs battered in. Gonzaga also getting ready to go for the nightcap. The Zags, there they the are. Zags, yeah. Everybody uh, talks about the Gonzaga basketball team, and well, they should, but tell you what, this might be the best team in Gonzaga history on the baseball diamond. Pasqualini got hit on the hand, and he is in some serious pain. Now, did he swing, or is he going to get first base? Well, that's what we're about to find out, because it looked like to me he may have swung at this ball. And, of course, if you swing at it, it doesn't matter if it hits you. No, the bat never crossed, so that shouldn't count as a swing. Boy, does that hurt, huh? What a day for the freshman, though. Despite that, a little bit of pain. He has been on base four times. A career-high three hits. Mark Wazikowski out to... He'll talk with the home plate umpire, Mike Morris. Trying to see if that got his top hand or his bottom hand. I think bottom. it's the top hand. Was it bottom? Oh, pardon me. You're right. It was the top hand. Yep, yep. Left hand. All right, so here's Bertacci swinging at the first pitch. 
A couple of strikeouts, but a single and a run scored for the Blue Devils shortstop. And still plenty of time in this game for Central Connecticut. An offense that has scored six runs on 13 hits. Two strikes. Yeah, but if you're central, you got to make some hay right now because Colby Summers, the closer for Oregon, has been really good this year. Ten saves on the year. He'll be a tough one to try to get a lot of runs on. One and two to Bertacci. Who has hits in 10 of the last 12 games. It's out of Marlboro, Massachusetts. 1-2 pitch. Down the line, that's fair. Matthews will trot home. They're going to hold Pasqualini at third. Bertacci gets to second with a run-producing double. And now it's 13 to 7. Boy, it wasn't hit hard by Bertacci, but it was hit in the perfect place. You can see the third baseman, Obisky, playing off the line a little bit. Ball kind of gets in on his hands, but just enough, and I mean sneaks it right down the third base line. Third base umpire, Wilson Rader, all over that call. So a run comes home. So second and third now with a run home. Now another conference on the Oregon mound. Jake Angier comes out, pitching coach, to talk to Rio Britton and the infield. As Central Connecticut is going to bring up Jeff Nickel, it appears to pinch hit. And Nickel is a catcher by trade. So maybe Charlie Hickey has decided to give Sam Loder the rest of the day off. We will see. Because this is uh, Dan Cavino's spot in the order. He's the DH, so it's possible that Lotus stays in, but we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. <laughs> Jeff Nickel, a freshman, pinch hitting here in the seventh. 298, a homer, and 14 driven in. First pitch is down. Only a base hit here. And Central Connecticut is right back in the thick of it. Makes it interesting again, doesn't it? Just the 19th game for Nickel this year. He's had 47 at bats. Big spot here for the freshman. The 1 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now 1 and 2. As home plate is now being cast in mostly shadow. And as soon as it covers the batter's box, it's going to be a real challenge for hitters the rest of the mm -hmm. way. Yeah, because hitters hit off spin. I mean, that's what they see, the spin of the breaking ball, the spin of the change up in the fastball. And when the ball, when the pitcher's in the sun and you're in the shade or vice versa, it gets tough to see, but not so much right now. Nickel with a line drive base hit. One run is in. Bertacci will stop at third as Nickel delivers a pinch hit RBI. And Central Connecticut has pulled to within five.
here's the, the look. Ball coming from light going into the shadow, but it didn't seem to bother the freshman Jeff Nickel a whole lot. And right now, head coach Charlie Hickey pushing all the right buttons. And Central Connecticut making some noise here. DeVito's been good at the plate. Two for four. With an RBI and a run score. We may be seeing one more pitching change here for the Ducks. That's it for Britain. Central Connecticut just won't die. Pitching change back in a moment. Magenta. Magenta! 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 The Epson Eco Tank. No more cartridges, just lots of ink. Print whatever makes you happy. The Epson Eco Tank. Just fill and chill. Oh, yeah. Get us a cerveza? Cerveza sin sabor. Un bimi ginger highball refrescante. Jim Beam, refresco de jengibre, toque de lima. Eso suena mejor. Salud. This is Andrew Mosiello, freshman out of Temecula, California, coming on. The fourth reliever today for the Ducks after Cullen Kafka got the start. Yeah, this is one of their real dudes. I mean, you look at the numbers. How about that? 49 punch outs and only 33 innings pitch. He's only walked seven, so a better than a seven to one strikeout to walk ratio. Just a freshman making his 21st appearance. It's a big arm from the right side, a breaking ball, and a changeup as well. He has punched out 11 against no walks in his last five trips to the mound. And this is the guy that I'm sure they didn't think they were going to need. But Central Connecticut has just been so good offensively. Eight runs, 15 hits today. They've scored two more here in the seventh and just won't go away. Well, all you had to know about them is the fact they came to the loser's bracket of their conference tournament and beat the conference champion, regular season champion, in Bryant. And if you can do that, it tells you what kind of grit you have to be able to come back and beat Bryant in back-to-back -back days, and that's exactly what Central did. Here's Charlie Hickey. These guys have shown great character throughout the postseason, doing it again today. Now they're going to face Andrew Moziello, who is the nephew of... Bill Moziello, the assistant at TCU. Hitting coach over there, kind of the offensive coordinator for the Horn Frogs. A top eight national seed. Hosting a regional this weekend in Fort Worth. Jay DeVito, two hole hitter for the Blue Devils as his batter's box is completely in shadow now here at PK Park. Yeah, this is when it's going to get a little more difficult. The 0-1. Trying to twist that breaking ball, and it doesn't snap for him. 1-1. DeVito with a single in the third, and again in the sixth. Trying to hold up, it's 1-2. And the fifth pitcher of the day for the Oregon Ducks. And that's a foul ball. Got just a piece of it to stay alive. Alongside Ben McDonald, I'm Clay Matvick. We're watching this one in Eugene, Oregon. Game one of the regional that the Ducks are hosting, hosting for the first time since 13. Snap throw to first and back is Nickel. LSU and Gonzaga already in the ballpark, ready to go for the nightcap. And the more pitchers that these teams use, the other two teams like it. 
This one is hit well toward the gap in left center. That's a base hit for DeVito. Another run is in. And all the way into second is DeVito. And it's 13 to 9. Well, shade or no shade, it's not bothered Central Connecticut here in this inning. Jay DeVito with his third base hit of the game. And he looked bad on a couple sliders early. But he got one out over the plate. And how about Central Connecticut with runners in score position today? 509 runs driven in. Eight hits now from the top three spots in the lineup, including this guy, Martinez, who has a couple of hits and a run driven in. Look at the scoreboard. A lot of offense today. 28 combined hits. Well, it's been complete. You mentioned eight hits at the top three. How about the bottom three? Yeah. Five, five hits, no, six hits by the bottom three. So you talk about complete. And now Martinez, who has some home run power for sure, six on the year, could really make a statement. That's outside, two and one. Well, here's your fastball count to a fastball hitter. And the one thing that's missing today for Central Connecticut is the long ball. Back to the mound. They're going to throw home. And out at the plate. Nickel tried to score, but he's the second out. Nice play by Andrew Mozello right here. Watch him catch this ball. Kind of goes towards first base. Quickly takes a look at third base to realize a runner coming home. A nice throw to the catcher, Scanlon. And the tag is applied. What do you make of Nickel trying to score on that comeback? I'm thinking he might have got a bad read because when you're at third base, typically you want to go on any ground ball except the one right back to the pitcher. And I think from the angle yeah. he was maybe looking at it, he thought it was going to be more towards first base. Yeah, that seemed like a like a mistake for Central Connecticut. Sometimes when you're at third Wayne base, bats, yeah, you get that read over there and you think it's going more toward up the first baseline versus back to the pitcher. And a low throw gets away. One run is going to score. And into third goes Martinez. An Oregon Ducks mistake. And Man, now it's 13 to 10. We talk so much about the defense of these two teams and how good they have been all year long. But it's not been the case today. You see the shortstop comes up. A little bit of a double clutch right there. And that's a tough pick by the first base for Matthews. Case of it just a little bit low on the throw. I think because he double clutched, got the timing off just enough. And look, it's a three run ball game with the tie and that's run standing at home plate. Yeah, that's officially the first error against the Ducks in this game. And here's Lotus. The ninth Blue Devil to hit here in the inning. And another ground ball toward the shortstop. Kasovich this time on the run, got him. Redeems himself to get the Ducks off the field. But Central Connecticut back in it again, down three. Are the color cartridges in your printer ready for another school year? What's Cyan mean? It means Cyan Mara honor roll. <laughs> the Epson Eco Tank. No more cartridges. It comes with an incredible amount of ink. Just fill and chill. Our life as a family revolves around football. Being a football kid, I believe, is just being a leader. And as parents, we have to look at our children and say, okay, we can see what's in you. And it's our job to help bring that out of you. It's a beautiful feeling. Big stretch time in Eugene, and this is what you've missed. 
If you're just tuning in and you missed a lot, 28 combined hits, 23 combined runs. Central Connecticut has base hit the Ducks. And Oregon has pounded the ball out of the ballpark with five total home runs, a program record. We talked about pitching and defense at the top of the broadcast, Ben McDonald. We haven't seen much of it. We hadn't seen much of either one of those two things, and these teams have been really good. We're talking about both of them top 16 in the country in both pitching and defense, and we've not seen it. And right now, Oregon takes a field goal lead into the bottom <laughs> of the seventh. <laughs> Uh, Peyton Stevens continues to pitch for Central Connecticut. As he is the fourth pitcher to work for the Blue Devils. Down just three now in the bottom of the seventh. Gavin Grant, Tanner Smith, and Kenyon Yovan. 9-1-2. and two, Two up for the Ducks this inning. Breaking ball misses inside. 2-1. Again, the winner gets either Gonzaga or LSU, whoever wins that game coming up later. Popped up. Back behind home plate and toward the Oregon dugout. It's going to get out of play. It's kind of tough to see now behind home plate. There's so much shadow there. It's got to be a challenge for the hitters now. Swing and a miss. Got him. So Gavin Grant goes down on strikes. Second strikeout for Stevens. That'll bring up Smith. Well, Stevens has a good arm, and you can see it right there. Threw a good two-seam fastball right in the inside part of the plate to Gavin Grant. And it's hard to believe, but we've not had a 1-2-3 inning yet today. No, we have not. And Central Connecticut hasn't been able to stop Oregon in any inning today. They have scored in every inning. They scored just one in the fourth, but crooked numbers in every other. Pitches down to Tanner Smith. Welcome to the game of baseball, right? Pitching and defense are your strengths, and it's 13 to 10. Inside out swing, flared the other way. So Smith is aboard with one out, and that'll bring up Yovan, who has been a wrecking crew. Set up a four, two run homer in the first, solo shot in the third. 16 homers on the year now. Yeah, and I'm talking about no doubters, both of them. Was a pitcher until 2019. He saved 20 games on the mound between 2017 and 18 for Oregon. And he was a reliever for the collegiate national team back in the summer of 2018. But then suffered a blood clot, Ben, in his right hand. It forced him to stop pitching, at least for now. But the way he is swinging the bat... It'll be interesting to see how much pitching he does in the future because he's a huge weapon offensively. Yeah, Coach Kaz told us you know, he hadn't used him this year, but he could be available in this tournament if needed. And the way the pitching is going right now in this tournament, you may need all hands on deck to get through this one. Throw down to first, and easily back is Smith. Yovan struggled a bit in April, but had a terrific May. He had a six-hit game at Utah, six for six on the 15th of May, a program record. And that momentum is just building now in the postseason. Popped up. First baseman Martinez is going to make the call. For out number two. Here comes Zovella, who homered his last time up. Okay. 
And Central just one out away from doing something they hadn't been able to do all day. And that's put a zero on the scoreboard. You mentioned it. Oregon has scored in every inning. And if I told you Oregon was going to score in every inning, but yet we'd have a three-run game, you wouldn't believe it. No. Zavala two for four. And his average is at exactly 400 now. Came into the day hitting 398. First in the Pac-12 and now at 400 for the year. Yeah. Back in back June. June. I mean, yeah. that's and amazing. Back to, look, but he was an All-American last year in a short season. All-American again this year. He can swing it. It's this a mile high. It's going to stay in the ballpark. And the right fielder, Matthews, is going to make the catch. Hey, Oregon, no runs in the seventh. Begin today. Start planning at DisneyWorld.com. The Epson Eco Tank. No more buying cartridges. Look at all this ink it comes with. Big ink tanks. Lots of ink. No more cartridges. Incredible amount of ink. The Epson Eco Tank. Just fill and chill. The NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. We're back in Eugene, Oregon. Here's a look at Odson Stadium, the home of the Ducks football team. It's a football type score 13 to 10 in this opening round game of the NCAA baseball tournament and Central Connecticut State has given the Ducks a rub here as we move to the eighth inning the leadoff man Matthews lines it right to Matthews Dave Matthews into the glove of Gabe Matthews no relation one away. And this is a rocket, one of the hardest hit balls today, but what a play. Gabe Matthews goes up the ladder, watch this, on his toes, ready to go in the ready position, and up he goes and robbed what certainly would have been extra bases. Loved his ready position. You know, all infielders, if you'll watch them, as the pitcher winds up and the ball begins to come out of the hand of the pitchers, all the infielders are taking a step forward and kind of bouncing. They want to be on their toes so they can react just like that. Now here's Tornero, one for four. One and two count, and Tornero, you know, it's not often he gets to two strikes, but when he does, he's really hard to strike out. The toughest to strike out in the Northeast Conference this year. One every ten at bats. Popped up. Calling for it is Grant, the second baseman. He's got it. Two down. And this is good stuff from Andrew Moziello out of the Ducks pen. Yeah, because I would think the Ducks would rather not use Summers or Closer. No doubt. He could, to, he could give you extra innings. You know, he's not just a one-inning guy. If you could save him for tomorrow, maybe you can get him in like the seventh or the eighth inning. Mm -hmm. Assuming Oregon hangs on and wins this game. It's been a great day at the plate for Hunter Pasqualini. Career high three hits. Got hit by pitches last time up. He has scored twice. The 1 1. 1 and 2. Well, everybody has reached base in the lineup for Central Connecticut. And I think if I'm looking at it right, only Sam Loder, the catcher, is the only one that doesn't have a base hit in the lineup. Central Connecticut trailed 11 to 6 back in the fifth. 
Charlie Hickey's team has been gritty and fighting all day. Back within three, but starting to run out of outs. The biggest comeback this year, they trailed 8 nothing to Fairleigh Dickinson. In that ball game, one 14-12. If they have left 10 runners on base today. That's something that's going to come back to haunt them if they do lose this game. Some Blue Devils fans who are here in attendance in Eugene, maybe making the trip all the way across the country. 2 2 pitch, called strike three, and we've got our first 1 2 3 inning of the day. Seven and a half in the books. 13-10 Ducks. Are the color cartridges in your printer ready for another school year? What's cyan mean? It means cyan mara honor roll. <laughs> the Epson Eco Tank. No more cartridges. It comes with an incredible amount of ink. Just fill and chill. Oh yeah, get us a cerveza. Un bean me ginger highball refrescante. Jim bean refresco de jengibre, toque de lima. Eso suena mejor. Salud. Welcome everyone to Omaha, Nebraska. That one is called. It's about to go down. Making the catch. This one's going to end up on Sports Center. Anchored down. Vanderbilt on top of the college baseball world again. Can't wait. For the College oh, World it. Series, it's back in the Big O this year. Vanderbilt won the title as the number two national seed in 2019, and that place is going to be jumping later in June. Yeah. 13 to 10 as we go to the bottom of the year. It was anchored down two years ago. Vandy with their second national title. Behind, at the time, young Kumar Rocker, who's projected to be a top five pick in the draft coming up in July. It's quite a one-two punch, rocker and lighter. Vandy very well could repeat. So Oregon hitting here in the bottom of the eighth. They've got a three-run lead. Does that feel like enough to you, Ben McDonough? No, it doesn't. Not from what we've seen today. They would love for a couple of insurance runs here. Because it wasn't too long ago. Central Connecticut threw up a four spot in the seventh inning. Peyton Stevens has looked good out of the pen for Central Connecticut. Gets a ground ball to his shortstop, Pertacci. And Matthews is fairly quickly retired here to start the eighth. Boy, and Peyton Stevens has been on point since coming in for Central. He has faced seven batters now, retired six. And he's doing exactly what he needs to do, and that's stack a couple of zeros and give this offense a chance. Kasevich two for four, struck out looking his last time up. Breaking ball doesn't break. 13 runs, 13 hits, one error for Oregon. Their big story, the five home runs. Here's another ground ball. Bertacci again, two down. And that'll bring up Anthony Hall, who has been impressive at the plate, Ben, a homer in the second. He left the yard again in the fifth. Yeah, only four home runs coming in, but he has driven in three, four, five, six runs today, two home runs. Fielder's choice, of course, an RBI single as well. And Kenyon Yovan also with a big day at the plate. Yeah, so those two guys responsible for driving in nine of the 13 runs for the Oregon Ducks today. It's just a different feel for this offense compared to some of the recent Oregon teams we've seen. There's much more power. It's a more physical offense. That's off the front foot of Hall. Foul ball. And it's not just one or two guys. It's, it's four or five, six guys in the lineup that you feel can run it out. 
No doubt. And, but they showed diversity, too. You know, uh, we've seen several ways they could beat you, not just the long ball. That's what stands out today is the five home runs, obviously. But we've seen some bunts for base hits. We've seen some extra 90s. We've seen some backside hitting. It's been a complete offense. Anthony Hall took over as the everyday center fielder in mid-April. Hasn't looked back. Won't be coming out anytime soon. The 0-2. That could have been strike three, but he just missed off the inside part of the play. Yeah, perfectly placed pitch by Stevens. Anthony Hall was also a pitcher, but he had Tommy John surgery after high school and has been a position player since leaving San Diego. He's a second-year freshman. Two two pitch. Looking ahead, Ben, to the ninth inning for Central Connecticut. They've got nine, one, and two due up. Bertacci, Nickel, who was in the number one spot back in the seventh, he was the pinch hitter, and then DeVito. Line drive. Caught. Pasqualini makes the catch to end the inning. So the Ducks with a one, two, three, eight. Last chance for the Blue Devils coming up. The Epson Eco Tank. No more buying cartridges. Look at all this ink it comes with. Big ink tanks. Lots of ink. No more cartridges. Incredible amount of ink. The Epson Eco Tank. Just fill and chill. Our life as a family revolves around football. Being a football kid, I believe, is just being a leader. And as parents, we have to look at our children and say, OK, we can see what's in you. And it's our job to help bring that out of you. It's a beautiful feeling. The NCAA Baseball Regionals. Coverage from all 16 sites continuing tomorrow on ESPN3 and the app. For more information on all 90 championships, go to NCAA.com. Don't forget, coming up tonight, Number two, Gonzaga, the three seed LSU in this Eugene Regional. 10 Eastern time, 7 Pacific time over on ESPNU will also be here on the web. It's going to be a good one. And whoever wins this one will play the winner of that one in the 1-0 game tomorrow. All right, so Oregon has decided to bring in Colby Summers, their closer. They've got a three-run lead, but obviously don't feel confident enough to not bring in their lockdown guy. Yeah, and I don't blame him. I don't blame Coach Waz at all. I mean, look, you got to win game one of the regional. You talked about the numbers. If you lose game one, the chance of coming back, even at home, are very slim. So just up three runs, you're going to see the closer, of Col Colby Summers. And Colby Shade has come in to play defense in center for Hall. Bertacci leads it off in the nine hole. He had an RBI double his last time up. He's two for four with a couple of strikeouts. And the junior left-hander buries a strike. It's one and one. Summers looking to pick up his 11th save of the season. Boy, he's been tough to hit this year. Opponents hitting just 139 against Summers. He has not allowed a run in 14 of his 17 trips to the mound. Trying to lock this one down here in the ninth. Breaking ball, misses, two and two. Bertacci, Nickel, and DeVito, the scheduled hitters here for the Blue Devils. They went one, two, three in the eighth. Swung on and missed, but it gets away from Scanlon. He's got a chase. And Bertacci's out at first. Great recovery by the Oregon defense. Boy, and Bertacci hesitated just enough at home plate. Watch Bertacci. Boy, 
Scanlon hustles to this ball. But watch Bertacci right there. He swings and hesitates just enough. He doesn't realize the ball gets away. He takes off and a really good job by Jack Scanlon. He gets it and throws a dart all the way down to first base. And a nice finish on the back end by Matthews. And a big first out here in the top of the ninth. That's where it helps to have a tall six foot four catcher. I mean, he's got long arms. He reached and threw immediately to get Bertacci. Nickel is a pinch hitter, had an RBI single in the seventh. PK Park, Eugene, Oregon. Ben McDonald, Clay Matvick. Here in the ninth inning, the winner will face either LSU or Gonzaga tomorrow. This is hit well to right center, but Shade tracks it down. And now the Blue Devils are down to their last out. And the loser of this game, Ben, has to turn around tomorrow and play an elimination game with their season on the line. And that's not easy, especially in a game where a lot of players have been used, especially out of the bullpen. No doubt. No doubt. You've gone through a lot of your pitches. It's an emotional game, obviously, a back and forth game in this one. First pitch to DeVito is a strike. Well, Summers has a good breaking ball. It's a hard slider to go along with a low 90s fastball as well. Checked his swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Two strikes. And even though I'm sure they didn't want to use Summers here on day one, if he's efficient enough, this will be no big deal, and he'll be able to throw again tomorrow. One and two. Ten runs, sixteen hits for Central Connecticut State. In their seventh NCAA tournament appearance. They have been scrappy all game long, down to their last out, needing a base runner. Needing a couple of base runners. 2 2 to DeVito. Down and in, full count. Well, from 0 2 to 3 2. DeVito has been on four times today. Three hits. He's driven in a couple of runs. 3-2 pitch. Walked him. And so there is still a pulse here for Central. I'll bring up Noah Martinez, their power hitting first baseman. Martinez with a couple of hits in this game. Summers trying to get out of this. And get the Ducks to tomorrow undefeated. Well, I think if you're Martinez, your approach has to be trying to hit it backside. It's lefty on lefty matchup with that slider, that breaking ball that he has. And Summers has on a good fastball. Summers with the 0-2 pitch. Got it. And the Ducks win it. What a game. 13 to 10. And Oregon well, moving on to the 1-0 game tomorrow, Ben. It wasn't the game we thought we were going to see. We thought we were going to see pitching and defense. And boy, 
If you're Central Connecticut, they battled, I mean, 16 hits, two of which were extra base hits, but they gave up three unearned runs. That ended up being the difference. The defense was not solid, but you love the way that they battled for Oregon. I mean, what can you say? They didn't pitch it that well, but I tell you what, five home runs in the ball game. They put up 13 runs, and those five home runs were responsible for seven of the runs they put up. So Oregon will play the winner of our next game coming up in just a bit on ESPNU between the two seed Gonzaga and the three seed in this regional, the LSU Fighting Tigers. Looking forward to that one coming up approximately 10 Eastern time, 7 Pacific. So for our entire crew, Ben McDonald, I'm Clay Matvick. We hope you enjoyed this slugfest in game one from Eugene. The final, Oregon 13, Central Connecticut 10, as the Blue Devils face elimination tomorrow.